legs of DeAndre Swift and Elijah Holyfield. The Texas Longhorns march into New Orleans on the back and arm of Sam Ellinger. It's SEC versus Big 12. Red and black versus burnt orange. Dogs versus horns for just the fifth time ever. And for the first time here in the Sugar Bowl. Sounds pretty sweet. And welcome everyone to the final New Year Six Bowl game at the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 15, Texas. Number 5, Georgia. Two schools with a combined 1,726 wins, six national championships, four Heisman Trophy winners. And meeting in a big one tonight. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. Joined by Holly Rowe in a moment. Whenever there's a bowl game, you wonder about the readiness of the teams. Todd, we do not have to wonder about the readiness of the two <laughs> iconic mascots of these two universities, two of the most famous. There's Ugga and Bevo, and that was one hour before the game. Ugga came over to say a pleasant hello, it seemed, and Bevo <laughs> wanted no part of that. And one of the big questions heading into this game on the field, the readiness of Georgia, their yeah. mental frame of mind, number five, the first team out of the college football playoff. A lot of people thought they should be in. Do you think they'll be ready to go tonight? I do think. I, I think they will be. They've got a lot of young players, and this is their chance to shine. And I really think if, if you think you're one of the four best teams and should have been in the playoffs, there's no better way to prove that point than on the field against a team that plays in the conference that their champion beats you guys for getting in the uh, playoffs. So I think they will be ready. Of course, last year they played for the national championship, lost in overtime to Alabama. They had the great running back duo of Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb, each selected in the top 35 picks of the NFL draft and thriving now as rookies. So a lot of people wondered, would they be able to run the ball? Yes, they can with a new dynamic duo. Well, they lost two running backs, but they brought four starting offensive linemen back, and that made it good because DeAndre Swift, who was the third back last year, has had an outstanding season, particularly in the second half of the year when he got completely healthy. He has tremendous vision and ability to cut without losing speed, ran for over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. And then Elijah Holyfield, his running mate, doesn't have the same make you miss capability, has the speed to get to the perimeter, but the thing that's special about him is his power. He is a very strong runner, averages over four yards per carry after contact, and the combination of Holyfield and Swift, almost 2,000 yard rushers again. We talked to Tom Herman, the Texas coach, now in year two. He described the season as progress. It would be a big win to get the 10th win of the season tonight, win a New Year's Six Bowl game. They have a hard time running the ball. They do it through the air, and they have an excellent duo of wide receivers. Yeah, and they're big, and that's the thing. The matchups that these two guys create on an opposing defenses is because of their size. They're both well over six foot four. Lil Jordan Humphrey is a slot receiver. He's very physical. He's the leading receiver, 79 catches, nine touchdowns. Very physical after the catch, and when he's on the inside, he gets matched up with linebackers and safeties a lot. On the outside, Colin Johnson is even taller at six foot six, and when he's going against cornerbacks, he does a great job of using his body to shield the, the defender away from the football. Sam Ellinger, the quarterback, one of the best things he does is he trusts these guys, and he will throw the football up and give them opportunities to make plays. The Georgia Bulldogs, the Texas Longhorns, and the kickoff from New Orleans right after this. Are you ready? Ready? Is you ready? Tackle breaking free at Swift at the 20. He dives near the pylon and he crosses the goal line. Dell Phoenix got a man open. It is caught. Touchdown, Texas. What's he got? 30, 20, 15. Touchdown! Swift done it again! And that pass is caught! Little Jordan Humphrey! Touchdown, Texas! There's your ball game! Touchdown, Georgia! Just about ready to go. Been a great day of college football. We hope we have a real close one for you tonight. Down on the field, here's Holly Rowe. Coach Kirby Smart, I know that you'll be without your Jim Thorpe award winner, DeAndre Baker, at corner, but you've got some other guys on defense maybe out. What's DeAndre Walker's status? He's been nursing a groin injury. 
Uh, he tried to go and warm up. It's still bothering him. He may struggle to go. We got a lot of other guys to play. We're going to play some young players. I'm excited to see them play tonight. Coach, everybody wants to know if Georgia's ready. What did you see in the locker room and as your guys ran out that let you know if they are? I can look in their eye and tell. Our team wants to play well. They've been challenged for a long time. I'm excited to see them go play. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Kirby Smarts, Georgia Bulldogs, well represented in the crowd, as are the burnt orange Texas Longhorn Sam Ellinger will get the ball first. Georgia won the toss, Kirby Smart deferred. So Rodrigo Blankenship kicks off. Very unlikely we'll see a return from Lil Jordan Humphrey. 79 touchbacks in 93 kicks offs, and now that's the 80th off the foot of the junior Blankenship. So here comes Sam Ellinger. The Texas quarterback out of Austin, Texas, Westlake High School, the same school that produced, among others, Drew Brees. And he came out tonight wearing a Drew yeah. Brees Westlake High School jersey with number 15, paying tribute to the man who has occupied this building with great distinction for so many years. He attended Drew Brees' camps as a youngster. Trey Watson, the running back for Texas. Andrew Beck. The shifting man, and here's Watson. Puts his head down and then got stood up after a seven yard gain. Here's tonight's Chick fil A impact players. Todd told you about little Jordan Humphrey and Colin Johnson. 144 combined receptions. And they get 145. Humphrey driving out toward midfield and crosses midfield to the 49 of Georgia. And watch for Texas to go fast now using tempo. That's the matchup problem with inside receivers. As big as Humphrey is, he catches those slants and he is very physical after the catch. Watson the running back. Trying to turn the corner. And he's dropped after a gain of two. Texas knows they're not going to be able to line up and just run right at this Georgia defense. They got to find creative ways to run, and that includes the quarterback, Sam Ellinger, an excellent runner. He had nine games this season where he carried the ball 10 or more times. I would expect to see him in double digit carries tonight. Mm -hmm. Carried it 15 times in their loss to Oklahoma on December 1st in Arlington, Texas, in the Big 12 title game. Scored two touchdowns. Tom Herman compares him to Tim Tebow. And that seems to be an apt comparison based on what we've seen. Similar competitiveness as well. Trey Watson the catch out of the backfield. About three yards short of the first down. Tyler Clark made the tackle for Georgia. Well, and just as Kirby said to Holly, DeAndre Walker not out there right now. And this is a team that only had 22 sacks. They don't pressure the quarterback great, and he was their best. And oh, he's not far. out there. He had seven and a half sacks. Walker, the next highest total for any player is two. They're a pass rush by committee. They bring some pressure on third and four. A nice call by Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, against it. And Keontae Ingram, the freshman running back, gets swung down, but he made it all the way to the 27-yard line. See, that inside linebacker is responsible in man coverage for the back. Coming out, he gets hung up in the wash. And that's an excellent call anticipating a blitz and man coverage by Tim Beck. 15-yard gain. Trey Watson and Keontae Ingram saying enough of the hype about DeAndre Swift and Elijah Holyfield. Don't forget about us. Doing it in the passing game, the running backs, the play fake, a good ball by Ellinger, and another first down to Devin Duvernay. Well, this is a, an excellent drive here for Texas to start as you take a look at DeAndre Walker pacing the sidelines. Good blend of a few runs, play action passes, some quick throws, and they've got this Georgia defense a little bit back on their heels. Again, a lot of young guys out there for the Bulldogs. That's been the way throughout. They substitute liberally all over the defense. He did their game against Auburn at midseason. There were a number of times, six or seven defenders running on at once. Play clock at three. Ingram 
Wrapped up and swung down by Jonathan Ledbetter, the senior from Tucker, Georgia, coming to the end of an outstanding career. His motivation level was obvious when we talked to him yesterday. Yeah. He was ready to go 24 hours ago. Very focused, wants to play well, wants to improve his draft stock. He's going to go play in the Senior Bowl. He's a highly motivated young guy playing in this game. Second team all SEC design quarterback run for Ellinger. And Georgia ready for him. Jawan Taylor leading the way. Of course, Todd, this Georgia defense, another issue. Mel Tucker was the coordinator all right. year. After their championship game against Alabama, he left to be the head coach at Colorado. So it's signal calling by committee on this Georgia defense with Kirby Smart heavily involved. Yeah, Glenn Schumann is up in the press box. Dan Lanning is on the field. And, of course, Kirby Smart very involved in the defensive calls as well. Big call here on both sides of the ball. Four minutes in. Impressive opening drive for underdog Texas. And the Horns punch it in. They can get a first down at the three. Ellinger fires caught. Humphrey has the first down inside the two-yard line. Really nice route by little Jordan Humphrey. He's going to press against the defender and roll back inside and use that big body again. And Ellinger, with good protection, hits him for the first down. Again, the rapid pace. And Ellinger runs it in, a la Tim Tebow. Touchdown, Texas. What a start for the Horns. George is going to blitz a linebacker, but they're blitzing from the opposite side, and there's not an extra guy. The blitz comes here, but Ellinger is running this way, gets right behind his back, Keontae Ingram. Nice block by the tight end, 47, Andrew Beck. And what an impressive drive for the Longhorn. And the true freshman kicker out of Austin, Lake Travis High School, Cameron Dicker knocked one through. Impressive opening drive engineered by Sam Ellinger. Texas first on the board, 7-0 Horns. National Championship Game, Monday at 8 on ESPN. What a matchup that should be. Alabama and Clemson. Georgia just two losses on the year. One of them, the heartbreaking defeat on December 1st in Atlanta in the SEC title game to Alabama. They had a two touchdown lead that got away. And Texas battled Oklahoma all the way to the end yeah. in the SEC championship game before losing 39-27. Well, Sam Ellinger had a shoulder injury about midway through the season. It affected him. They had to really reduce his pitch count. And uh, this rest and time off, after that championship game has been valuable for him. He took a week and didn't do anything. He was five for five on that opening Texas touchdown drive. Four different receivers. Cameron Dicker, the touchback. And here comes Jake Fromm. Last year, really a game manager. Now, he is a factor with his throwing as well. Sophomore from Warner Robins, Georgia. Completing 68.4%. Not only did that lead the SEC, but if it stays there. That'll be the yeah. single season Georgia completion percentage record. Yeah. 27 touchdowns. That's third best ever for a Georgia quarterback. So he has really upped his game and, and fought off competition. I mean, this is a competitive guy who has become the key leader of this team, and he's only a sophomore. Smart, accurate, tough. Gets them in the right plays. Gets a lot of latitude at the line of scrimmage from Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator. Gave it to Elijah Holyfield. And he got greeted rudely by Chris Nelson and Joseph Osai. On this side of the ball, the Chick-fil-A impact players. Riley Ridley, the outstanding receiver for Georgia. Brother Calvin Ridley, the former Alabama receiver. Charles Amenahu, the defensive lineman of the year in the Big 12. And Gary Johnson, their leading tackler. Georgia 39 points per game. That's actually four points better per game than the team that played for the national championship last year. Four-man rush. Holyfield out of the backfield. Put his head down and got to the 29 with Chris Boyd and Joseph Osai there for Texas. 
the big question for Texas in this game on both sides of the ball is can they hold up in the line of scrimmage because this Georgia offensive line is much bigger than Texas's defensive front seven. They're going to rely on quickness and stunts and slants like they did on that first down play, but uh, this is a very big and athletic it's Georgia line. Massive was yes. the word Tom Herman used. The smallest player on that offensive line is the center, Gilliard, 6'2", 308. From on target with a man wide open. Terry Godwin tried to dance away from Brandon Jones and could not, but it's a Georgia first down to the 40-yard line. Well, Godwin's going to come right here in a little crossing route, right in front of the eyes of the quarterback. Good pocket protection and a nice completion for Jake Fromm, his first one of the ball game. Guy knows how to distribute the football. In the Alabama game, he hit nine different receivers. Had a brilliant game against that Alabama defense. Sees the field and gets rid of the football. At one point against Alabama, he had 10 straight completions. They had both of the running backs in, Swift and Holyfield, and Swift got dropped for a loss by the corner. First team all Big 12, Chris Boyd, senior from Gilmer, Texas. The strength of this Texas defense is in the back end. A couple of corners who have played a lot of ball here for the Longhorns, two very good safeties. Number 11, P.J. Locke, has started 30 games. I mean, he is really one of the leaders. It's an excellent secondary, both in coverage and in tackling. Brian Herrion came in and running back, but he shifted out, and they go five wide against the four-man rush. From not as adept a runner as Ellinger and Gary Johnson tripped him from behind. Matter of fact, Jake's longest run of the season is just 10 yards. That was against Florida. Well, here's Gary Johnson. He's a linebacker. He's working on Andrew Thomas, their best offensive lineman. But once he accelerates to the quarterback, this is a former 100-meter state champion in high school. This is a linebacker who can really fly. Yeah, 6 feet 230, ran a 10.59, 100 meters to win the 2015 Alabama Class 5A state title. Third down and nine. Swift, the running back. Look out, Fromm did well to hang on to the ball as Omena who tried to bat it away and then Fromm, under pressure, threw it away. Charles Omenahu, the Big 12 Defensive Lineman of the Year, working on Isaiah Wilson, the right tackle, the best pass rusher on this team. He gets to Fromm first, doesn't get the sack, almost knocks the ball out, but then Fromm ends up just throwing the football away. We talked to Omenahu yesterday, we asked him, what are your greatest skills? He said, I terrorize the other team's quarterback. <laughs> He's off to a good start on that one. Led the Big 12 in sacks with nine and a half. Here's the freshman Jake Camarda out of Norcross, Georgia, has had an excellent year. Wow. <laughs> and right on cue. And a beautiful that. bounce and landed near the two and did not kick into the end zone. Richard LeCount downed it. Well, as we're going to break, the men and women in our truck showed you the shot of the punter, Jake Camarda, going down on a knee, and they did it for a reason. His knee was down. And while we were away in the replay booth, they took a look at it, and they are going to mark the ball all the way back at the 27-yard line of Georgia yeah. where his knee went down. The punt was down to the Texas 7. Yeah, 70 yards of field position swing. And I would expect Texas, after that play, to really take a shot right now because now you've got an opportunity to really stick one in there and, and put the pressure on this Georgia team. Sixty six yards of field position difference. Nick Moore an experienced snappers. Matter of fact, he's been invited to the senior bowl. Trey Watson, the running back, everything going Texas's way to start this game halfway through the quarter. And Sam Ellinger's pass over the middle, batted down by Devontae Wyatt. 
Part of that rotating defensive front. Sophomore from Decatur, Georgia. Again, how will the Texas offensive line hold up against this Georgia defense? So far, it's early, but so far pretty good in their pass protection for Sam Ellinger. They blitz. And Trey Watson stuffed after a two-yard gain. Another nice play by Ledbetter. Fought off the block, worked inside, and just met Trey Watson right there at the point of attack. Big play right here for the Georgia defense. After that turnaround, if they could get a stop here and force a field goal attempt. Andre Walker, their best player on the defensive line. Sack and tackles for loss leader still on the sideline with the groin injury. Suffered in the conference title game. Five-man rush. Ellinger steps away from it. And gets wrestled down just shy of the 20. Richard LeCount, the safety, who's their leading tackler for the year. At the 20-yard line, and Tom Herman sends the field goal unit out. Well, Good job by the Georgia defense to rally after the snap. Caused the ball to be spotted at the 27-yard line. Yeah, that was one of those freshmen that's going to rotate in there and rush the passer. Adam Anderson, number 56, who got there first and flushed Ellinger from the pocket. Cameron Dicker, terrific freshman season, including the game-winning kick from 40 yards with nine seconds to go against Oklahoma in the regular season. That's good from 37. Camarda still upset. Texas leads 10 to nothing. The All-State Sugar Bowl, brought to you by All-State, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Chick-fil-A catering, it's the little things that take the stress out of the holidays. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? One of the most memorable Sugar Bowl games, the 83 game, number two Penn State upsets number one George and Herschel Walker, led by our own Todd Blackledge, the most outstanding player. 228 yards passing. Congratulations, you were on the field Thank before you. the game tonight, inducted as part of the second class of the Sugar Bowl Hall of Fame. I know it means a lot to you. That kickoff goes out of bounds. Cameron Dicker. Todd Blackledge, quarterback for Penn State, and the most valuable player. Jerome Bettis next to you, Vince Dooley. We could read your lips telling Jerome Bettis you're being booed, and you were because yes. there are Georgia fans here right. tonight, and they remember yeah. that you played the biggest Vince part Dooley. in their team not winning the yeah. national championship. You won the first for Coach Paterno. Yeah. And I was just glad that they booed Steve Spurrier more than me because he beat Georgia <laughs> more than I did, so he got an even bigger boo. But what a, uh, such a great class. Very honored to be a part of it. And met a guy that I'd never met before, Bobby Greer, who played at Pitt. Was the first African American to play in the Sugar Bowl, the 1956 Sugar Bowl against Georgia Tech. Just a really neat guy. Saw Jerome Bettis, Bobby Lane, Daryl Royal, Deion Sanders, Steve Spurrier, Scott Werner, former Georgia Bulldog, yeah. also part of that class. Elijah Holyfield carries for Georgia. Joseph Osai, the stop. Here's Holly. Well, we walked into the Georgia practice two days ago, and one of the men who referees for Georgia, the moment we walked in, said, Oh no, Blackledge again in New Orleans. They sure remember how Todd ruined their season. He said, you know, you're my favorite TV analyst, but the one I hate the most is a college quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> I've run into a lot of them. We've done a lot of Georgia games over the last several years. It's hard to dislike you, Todd. You're as easygoing and nice a human being as I know. Second down and five. There's Holyfield. You have to hope his dad, Evander Holyfield, doesn't dislike you because yeah. that could be a problem. The great former heavyweight champion of the world is here tonight to cheer on his son Elijah, one of 12 of uh, Evander Holyfield's children. I think this is going to be a game that's going to shape up for Jake Fromm to really take some shots. I think Texas is really locked in to trying to get extra bodies around the running game of Georgia, and I think he's going to have an opportunity to make some plays down the field. I should point out Elijah Holyfield's mom, Tammy Petaway, here tonight as well. 
He's on the sideline now, DeAndre Swift, an excellent receiver at running back. Needs to do some work, and Amenahu won't let him work. Charles Amenahu said, we want to be known as the Texas team that got the program back to where it should be, not just by making a New Year's Six game, but by winning it. Watch Amenahu. He's going to go on an outside stunt and then read the play. He has a great feel for the play, peels off on the rush, as does Hager, and they stop that play for nothing. This Texas defense so far very locked in. Here's Jake Camarda. And obviously the snap much better this time. But the oh kick boy. is nowhere near as good. It's a shank. See that that snap's still in his head. I mean, you know, kickers, they can they go up and down confidence-wise and men mentally sometimes. And that kick right there was the result of what happened on his first punt attempt. He's still not over it. He is a true freshman. And a little sales job for the coaching staff on the sideline with Camarda. We'll tip off the new year with our first NBA Wednesday doubleheader. It comes your way tomorrow. Carl Anthony Towns and the Timberwolves in beautiful downtown Boston to take on Kyrie and the Celtics. That's at eight. And then the Lakers hosting Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and the Thunder at Staples Center. LeBron James hasn't played since Christmas with a strain growing. Coverage begins with NBA countdown at seven on ESPN in the app. A shank by Jake Camarda, an 11-yard punt, the one that got negated because of the knee down went 53 yards. And Texas already leading 10 to nothing, out gaining Georgia 81 to six. Starts at midfield. Sam Ellinger in an early rhythm. Devin Duvernay with sprinter speed tackled by Jawan Taylor. What Ellinger is doing really well right now is he is setting protections. That was a max protection. They had a back and a tight end. He put him where he wanted. He set the protection and then he had single coverage out here to throw. He's right now, they're asking him to do that a lot. George's defense gives you a lot of looks. So far he's seeing things well. Deontay Ingram was the running back. It got swung wide to little Jordan Humphrey. And he got chopped down by J.R. Reed, the outstanding junior safety. There's Jordan Davis. We've mentioned DeAndre Walker trying to go tonight, the defensive end, but bothered by a groin. Jordan Davis not even dressed. He would be in the middle of that defensive line, a freshman out with a back problem, and that's a big loss. He really yeah. came on as the year progressed. Yeah, began the year on the scout team and ended up being a starter and a key player in the middle of that defense. Option look. It's pitched by Ellinger to Ingram. Very highly recruited freshman out of Carthage, Texas. Been a little annoyed as he remained tangled up with Eric Stokes and Tay Crowder. This Texas football team, you, you would think they should be able to run the football better. Coming into the game, 104th in college football, only 3.8 yards per carry, but they've got to run enough to keep a team like Georgia honest defensively. Well, they're definitely a workmanlike offense. They have to sustain long drives. They don't have a play, and they're guilty of a all start penalty. Michael Mothershed of the Pac-12, the referee. All start, number 47, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. They don't have a 50-yard play from scrimmage. Even no. in the passing game at which they excel, but it's bit by bit. Yeah. The only other team in the country in FBS this year that did not have at least one 50-yard play from scrimmage was Central Michigan. Second down, second down. Georgia, by contrast, has 14 plays yeah. 50 plus. Very explosive Georgia offense this year. Coming into the game, averaging 7.4 yards per per play. One of the best, one of the top five in the country in that category. Out of the pistol, Ellinger misconnected with Ingram and had a dive on it. Loss of about a half yard. They're probably not in field goal range right now for Dickers. Long's 52. It's close. It's kind of a read play, and I think Sam just kind of. Hesitated a little bit too much with the ball in the belly of the back. And as he tried to pull it out late, dropped the football. Smartly, though, falls on it to avoid a bigger mistake. 
Talked about DeAndre Walker not being in the game. His replacement, Brenton Cox, right here, number one, is a true freshman. Highly recruited, but a young player. Not a Stockbridge, Georgia. High throw off the hands of Colin Johnson. It's difficult to throw it too high for him. He's 6'6". The son of the great All-American defensive back Johnny Johnson at Texas in the 70s. Watch Brenton Cox. We just talked about him. His pressure working on Cosme, the right tackle, is what caused the throw to sail a little bit on Sam. Ball was high, but it was because of the pressure put on by Brenton Cox. We'll see Brenton Cox. We'll see Robert Beal. We'll see Aziz Ojolari. Three real young, inexperienced players trying to fill that void from DeAndre Walker. Young and inexperienced, but also players that everybody wanted. Absolutely. The big improvement in the last couple years at Georgia. Outstanding recruiting under Kirby Smart. The best recruiting classes right in the country Offense. among them. Five -yard penalty. I love that right there. DeAndre Walker doing a little coaching on the sideline. Staying engaged, staying involved. Tom Herman takes the delay. Give a little more room to the punter who's been up and down Ryan Buczewski an Australian he's the cousin of Michael Dixon who was their great punter the last couple of years won the Ray Guy Award left early to go to the NFL was drafted in the fifth round by Seattle and Michael Dixon going to the Pro Bowl as a rookie Buczewski has not been as good and a dangerous return man back Terry Godwin Good job by Buczewski, and Godwin caught it at the 10. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, we told you who Georgia is playing without tonight, but Texas without their freshman of the year in the Big 12, Caden Stearns, their good safety. He injured his right knee in the Big 12 championship game. Tom Herman described it as a bone bruise. He thought he would be close to playing, but I have not seen him enter the game yet tonight. He's standing on the sidelines with his helmet. In his place, a sophomore and a freshman, B.J. Foster, number 25, the freshman, and Josh Thompson, the sophomore, have been rotating in his place. Keep an eye on the middle of the field because Caden Stearns has been everything for this Texas defense this year in the back end. That's a shame, and we spoke with Coach Herman, Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, yesterday. I got the impression yeah. they thought he would play. They do have Brandon Jones, who left the title game for the concussion against Oklahoma a month ago. Incomplete pass right through the hands of Riley Ridley. When you talk about a team's mental state, their mental ready it, readiness, it, it can show up in little mental mistakes. And, and, and something like that, a drop pass by Riley Ridley, that I'm not saying it definitely means they're not ready to play, but those kind of the things that you look for when you're trying to see is a team really focused on this game and this opponent on this night. Well, they have six yards of offense right now. One minute to go, first quarter. Inside handoff to DeAndre Swift. Ball's out. The ball is out. A pile up at the 13. The Horns say they have it, and they do. Gerald Wilbon came up with the football. It's a fumble. Well, the hit was the one of the guys that Holly was just talking about. Freshman B.J. Foster, number 25, is going to come up and knock the ball out. Along with Anthony Wheeler, number 45. And Wilbon, who played in this building as a high school senior in a state championship game. But that's another one of those plays. Just a little bit of lack of concentration on the part of DeAndre Swift. And Texas in great field position again. First turnover of the game, although the knee down on the punt certainly felt like a turnover for Georgia. And uh, throw some it. trickery. Little Jordan Humphrey to Ellinger. Bounces off the hits and gets an eight-yard gain. Humphrey has already thrown a touchdown pass this year. He's caught one, obviously, more than one. He's rushed for one. He's done it all. Watch. Ellinger bounce on now Richard LeCount is the leading tackler on this Georgia defense and he could not bring Ellinger down blitz on second and two Ellinger buried back at the 10-yard line 
Looked like he wanted to run, didn't see any running room, thought about throwing it, and Malik Herring ended all thought processes. Pressure by Georgia. He actually had enough time. He's got to throw that one out of the back of the end zone. Excellent coverage. It wasn't an all-out blitz. It was a zone pressure, so there were plenty of defenders. Well designed by the Georgia defense, and now third down and seven. That's the end of Gets the us to the end of the first quarter. And Georgia cover up for another mistake with its defense on the field. The All-State Sugar Bowl back right after these messages. You're watching the All-State Sugar Bowl. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe. We go to the second quarter. Texas leading 10 to nothing. And Todd, the first play of the second quarter feels big to me. Texas yeah. got only three on the last short field. Georgia tried to force another field goal attempt. I think if, if Ellinger gets Colin Johnson in single coverage, he's going to give him a shot. He's up here at the top. Six foot six wide receiver. Georgia without DeAndre Baker, the corner, won the Jim Thorpe Award as the best DB in the country. Ellinger eludes the rush. Ellinger, touchdown, Texas. He just ducked under the rush, and I think this might have been a quarterback keeper all the way because watch Watson. He's going to go and block. Ellinger, the pressure gets there quick. He ducks under it, and then he gets right behind the block by Trey Watson. The fact that he was blocking downfield says that was a quarterback draw on third and seven, and Ellinger made a great play. Well, they have so much faith in his ability to run. Yeah. Tom Herman said he's Tim Tebow. And the more you watch him play, the more he resembles him in all facets of the game. Yeah. I mean, he has the leadership and the competitiveness in addition to the running ability. Well, he, he is not afraid of contact. <laughs> he Does will that look run. like Tim Tebow? Yeah, that's him all the way. Protects the football high and tight. And, uh, and this is what Tim looked like. Tim's here today. I'm sure he loves watching Sam Ellinger play because uh, similar spirit in how he plays the quarterback position. Of course, Tim was a terrific player. I would suggest, and I do this with our colleague in the building, that Sam Ellinger might be a better thrower. Okay. I don't know. So, Tim's numbers were pretty good. Yes, they were very he good. He had good throwing numbers. But if Tim doesn't like that, you said it. <laughs> well, here's the comparison. Sophomore year for Tim Tebow, Florida. 2007 then for Sam Ellinger you said Tim put up yep. the numbers I take it back well the other day sure I compared to Ian to Drew Brees and then Notre Dame had what I don't know like one first down <laughs> I can't remember what it was I tried to forget so a big hole well this is where you need Jake from right here I mean he has been your leader you know and when we talked to him it was interesting because he said you know we got a lot of young guys. I think they're going to be ready to play. Some of the older guys don't know for sure, but we hope everybody's going to be on point. But now this is the time when, when Georgia needs him. They need him to step up and make some plays, rally the troops, and put a good drive together here. Still a lot of football left in this game. I thought Jake Fromm, we talked to a lot of the players' coaches about the emotional readiness. He gave the most honest answer. Yeah. He didn't say, oh, everybody's ready to go. We had great practice. He said, you know, I think it's going to vary person to person, as you said. Elijah Holyfield ahead for four. Of course, the other distraction we haven't mentioned yet, Justin Fields, number right. one prospect out of high school last year in the country, backup quarterback, freshman from Kennesaw, Georgia. Lots of rumors in the lead up to this game that he is transferring. Kirby Smart said, I don't think that decision has been made yet. I hope he stays. He's actually the roommate here in New Orleans of Jake Fromm. And Jake said, I don't know what he's going to do, but most people believe Fields will be leaving after this game. Charlie Warner, the tight end with the catch and spun down by P.J. Locke just short of the first down by a yard. And to Justin Fields' credit, according to everybody that we talked to, he is completely locked in. His practices has been good. He's taken all the second reps. He's been fully engaged. So no matter what his future plans are, he seems to be in the right place here in New Orleans. 
Big play for Georgia. Trying to just get a first down. And it's a struggle, but Brian Herrien gets it by a yard. Here's Holly. Well, in the early days of Georgia bull practice, someone close to the team told me that things didn't go well the first three days of practice to the point where they had to sit some starters and say, look, if you're not willing to prepare and have the energy and the pride that we need to get ready for the Sugar Bowl, you're not going to be in a part of our team. So guys had to sit. They sent a message to everybody that you better get ready. And uh, they told us that they've been flying around, that guys had a better attitude lately, but the early, was, uh, the early start was very difficult. They have a first down. And here's Harry. A tough run. He delivered the blow to Brandon Jones. Well, and I, I think they're giving Harry an opportunity here. Remember DeAndre Swift with this fumble deep in their own territory. And Harry with two powerful physical runs back to back. He's their fourth leading rusher on the year. He just ran over Brandon Jones, the safety. Georgia with just two first downs, 27 yards of offense. From completes for their third first down, and Ryan Ridley broke a tackle. Gary Johnson a little woofing after he made the stop. I like it. I like the bounce. Harrion gave them a little bit of a bounce in this drive. He converts the short yardage. He runs over the safety, and he bounces off the field, and Elijah Hollyfield bounces onto the field. And right now, Georgia in the midst of their best drive of the football game. Cross midfield for the first time. Texas has already had 18 offensive snaps in Georgia territory. Elijah Holyfield tried to deliver a stiff arm to Chris Boyd. He did turn the corner. And a good gain on first down. He got seven to the Texas 37. See, this is the identity, the true identity of the Georgia football team. It's to run the football. Jake Fromm's had a great year, but he's best when he's attempting 18 to 20, 22 passes a game, not 30 to 35, 37 passes. So that means they got to run the football effectively. They rushed for 17 yards. They averaged 251. Best in the SEC, 12th in the country. Holyfield zips through the middle. First down, Georgia at the Texas 28. Again, this offensive line is so big. They just get on you and kind of put those bodies in zone blocking. And they just move people because of their, so, their size and their girth. They go with tempo, and it's DeAndre Swift who got smothered for a loss. Back to the 30-yard line, B.J. Foster, as Holly reported in for the outstanding freshman, Caden Stearns, and Foster's played well. He was another yeah. highly right. recruited freshman. He started five games this year, as uh, they say they didn't have to go to the JV team. Well, and he and Stearns both enrolled early. They were in in January. They went through spring football. And, uh, so but at this point in the year, as many reps as they played, they're not freshmen anymore. On second and 11 from mobile enough to get away from the initial rush and then slid down as Malcolm Roach approached when you asked Jake yesterday Todd how do you want to get better with an eye toward next season I said I'd like to be more effective in the run game yeah well run game and extending plays and throwing on the run with accuracy I think all the things that you see guys at this level and the next level doing uh, to make themselves better players He's held off the top recruit in the country, Fields, who played in 12 games because Fromm is 23 and 4. As the starter, and has done just about everything else well except run the ball. They don't need him to be a runner. He's on target to the right man, and it's a first down. Riley Ridley. Run after the catch. They're inside the 20 for the first time tonight. Nice read. This is just zone coverage. Ridley's the underneath receiver. Texas dropping deep in zone coverage. The right read. You look deep to short and allow your receiver to run for the first down. Swift into the pile and does not move it. 
Gerald Wilbon in there, and Menahu again, all fired up. Texas really sold out on that first down play. They brought a corner blitz. They brought, brought inside linebacker pressure. Todd Orlando. He can still play. Oh, yeah. Former linebacker at Wisconsin. Played on their Rose Bowl team. The 94 season that beat UCLA. Their first appearance in the Rose Bowl for the Badgers since 63. From there wide open. On target to Brian Herrian for the Georgia touchdown. Really well-designed play, getting Harry and out of the backfield. The tight end is going to run down the seam and kind of seal off the safety. Harry and goes right down the gut here. It's a play action, so it holds the linebackers. And Harry and gets right into that soft spot. Isaac Nada with the little screen and well-executed touchdown. Rodrigo Blankenship just did make it. That's 244 in a row, PATs for the University of Georgia. 152 of those off Blankenship's foot. 12 plays, 75 yards as a 17-yard touchdown reception. First touchdown catch of the year for Brian Harriet. Well, look who's flying in. Everybody excited for Disney's Dumbo. Plenty of time to prepare to go see it. It's coming to theaters on March 29th. Pop that one in your count. I'm a little worried about Dumbo flying in here with the obvious tension right. between Bebo right. and Ugga in the pregame. Bebo has calmed down. Sir Bebo was ornery from the moment Bebo yeah. arrived tonight. Yeah. If you tuned in late, Ugga, 10, weighing 62 pounds, went over in the pregame. I think a very sportsman like this play in Bebo, <laughs> 1,700 pounds, 58 wings, inch wingspan on those horns. Attack Duga. Yeah. Well, he's fired up, mm -hmm. and so is Sam Ellinger. I mean, Sam Ellinger's off to a great start here early in the game, 7 of 9, doing a really nice job of getting rid of the football. And I'm very impressed with what he's doing with the protections. This is a max protection. He set his guys where he wanted to. Good vision downfield. And then what he always does when he gets in the red zone is ready to run the football. Quarterback draw, he loots the pressure, and you're just not going to bring him down with arm tackles. A physical, fearless runner. On first down, Rod Hurd, the receiver, senior, former starting quarterback. 10 games as quarterback as a red shirt freshman for the horns in 2015 just his 13th catch of this is senior season I think you got to find a ball to Colin Johnson here on this drive he's too valuable of a part of your offense he hasn't touched it yet you've got good things going mm -hmm. but he's got to get involved in your offense now there was Trey Watson the ball carrier the graduate transfer from Cal will spend just this season at Texas and their leading ball carrier for the year he had plenty of room and it's a first down boy good hit though Natrez Patrick yeah veteran senior from Atlanta he was the only linebacker coming back this season who'd started more than one game for Georgia he started 26 in his bulldog career. A little momentum for Georgia, but Texas on the move again with eight minutes to go in the half. Ellinger's eight out of ten for 80 yards passing. He's rushed for a couple. He's in trouble. Ducks under the hit from Aziz. Ojalary, and that was a big whiff by Ojalary as Ellinger ran all the way inside the Georgia 40. Well, Ojalary is, is one of those guys who has not played any meaningful snaps. He had a knee injury in high school. He's cleared now, but he wasn't able to bring down Ellinger. And because it was man coverage, the crossing route by Colin Johnson from that side left a void, and Ellinger took advantage of it. Ellinger avoided him like he was an Aziz. <laughs> 
Forty six yard line. Thank you for the courtesy chuckle. I'm sure Dumbo will be much funnier when it <laughs> appears on March 29th. Trey Watson. He got a rock but kept going forward. You know, we, we wonder we, about the investment yeah. level on each team. I think we have a football game now where yeah. everybody is engaged if they weren't at the start. And, and we've talked a little bit about Georgia and where they would be. Look at this for Texas now. This is the first major bowl game that they've been in since 2009. The first chance to win 10 games since 2009. They this lost to Alabama in the title game, DCS National Championship game in Pasadena that year, little Jordan Humphrey. And that's Devon Wilson playing his first snaps as a Georgia Bulldog tonight. True freshman hurt his knee in the offseason, has rehabbed all year to get out here. And as you yeah. can tell just by looking at him, uh, they like. Well, they loved him. He, he came in. He was highly recruited. Enrolled early, went through spring. Second day of spring football, he tore his knee up. And so this is his first action in a game since that happened. Looks like he might spend some time in the weight room while he was rehabbing the knee as well. Another one of the most highly recruited players in the country. But Watson breaking a tackle down the sideline and bumped out of bounds by J.R. Reed. Lecomte, their leading tackler for the year, with a big miss at the start of the play. It just didn't wrap up. He made good contact, but Trey Watson ran through the tackle and turned it in from a loss into a big game. This Impressive is response to the Georgia touchdown to this point by Texas. Ellinger throws it away. Yeah, good coverage downfield. Smart decision. Remember, one of the times they were down there, he held the ball too long and took a sack. If it's not there, throw the ball away. Live the play second down. We visited with Tom Herman yesterday. I said to him, after having done their Oklahoma Conference Championship game, Sam Ellinger is better than I thought. Tom Herman said, me too. Yeah. When he arrived at Texas, he didn't know that Sam Ellinger would be this good. He won a battle to be the starting quarterback with Shane Bouchel. This is a part of the field where you always have to be concerned with him running the football. And they were ready for him, so he pitched it. And they're ready for Keontae Ingram as well. Nice play by J.R. Reed, the safety. He read that quickly, ran across the field. Herring forced the, the pitch, but watch J.R. Reed, number 20, coming from the top. He's going to force him out of bounds for a loss of yardage on that play. He's an excellent player. Wasn't highly recruited. Went to Tulsa and established himself as a college player. Transferred to Georgia, the son of the former NFL player Jake Reed. And back in his home state, he's from Frisco, Texas. Who was near playing against his home state, I should say, in the neighboring state of Louisiana. Kirby Smart wanted a timeout. Didn't First like the look. Timeout, Another big play upcoming, 527 to go in the half. It'll be third down and 12. The Allstate Sugar Bowl, brought to you by Allstate. Reminding you that football season is mayhem. AT&T, more for your thing, that's our thing. The Ford F-Series, built Ford tough, built Ford proud. And Taco Bell's new cravings value menu, value beyond belief. We talked about the great history of the Sugar Bowl. How about that string of four years of most outstanding players? Four years in a row, Herschel Walker, Dan Marino, Todd Blackledge, Bo Jackson. Mel Tucker, the defensive coordinator, gone to Colorado in this instance, cleared during the timeout. Kirby Smart, longtime defensive coordinator at Alabama, running the defense for yeah. Georgia on this big play. That's Dan Lanning with him in the huddle, who's sharing in the duties, but Kirby taking control on this huge third down play in the red zone. Not Kirby and his enthusiasm told his team, starve your distractions, feed your focus. They look a little more focused now. Third and 12, out wide, Keontae Ingram, a lot of ground to gain and didn't get anywhere near the first down. Adam Anderson, one of those true freshmen playing more tonight because of the injuries ahead of him on the depth chart. Made a big play, freshman out of Rome, Georgia. We were talking during the break. This defense is just too fast for some of those perimeter plays to work. Unless you catch him in a blitz or you catch an inside coverage guy out of position, they're going to get to those perimeter plays pretty quickly. 
Good timeout. Good use of the timeout by Kirby Smart. And a good stop. Cameron Dicker, the 30 yard attempt. He's made seven of his last eight. He's made eight of his last nine. 4.37 to go until halftime at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Texas 20 and Georgia 7. Taco Bell is bringing the best of the regular season to the All-State Sugar Bowl by creating the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Today, Taco Bell picking up the tab for students from each school so that these passionate fans can root on their team. Enjoyed a spirited New Year's Eve in the Big Easy. A lot of these fans, some of our crew members last night. I think a few might have missed bed check. You think? You in charge of discipline? I know you were in bed. I was. Nice and early. A little horse today. I don't want anybody to think it was because you were out late. Dicker's kickoff is a touchback. No chance for Nicole Hardman, one of the best return men in the SEC. No chance, I think, for we, we've seen some Georgia players get re-energized and re-engaged, and now it's time for DeAndre Swift to do that. He has not been on the field since his fumble. He's back out there for this possession, and this is a good opportunity to get him re-engaged because he's your leading rusher over a thousand yards, and his ability to make people miss in the open field is, uh, is second to none. Well, after the loss at LSU when Kirby Smart said to us yesterday, that was my fault. I told the offensive coaches we need to throw the ball more. We didn't need to. They've really gone heavily to the ground game with great success. Fromm's pass just off the fingertips of Jeremiah Holloman. The sophomore from Covington, Georgia, was running with Devontae Davis. Yeah, that's good coverage by Davis, but that's a ball that needs to be caught. I mean, you can't throw the football any better than that. And of all the receivers on this team, Holloman's the guy that has the best rapport mm -hmm. with Jake Fromm. They came in the same recruiting class together. He's a great worker. Coaches want him to kind of take leadership of the of the wide receiver room. Just wasn't able to make that catch. And Fromm said they spent a lot of time on the second unit practicing together. That was a big opportunity missed. Texas crowding the line. Holyfield. Bounces outside, lunges for the marker. Chopped by Devontae Davis, and they'll mark Elijah Holyfield one yard short of the first down. Elijah Holyfield coming into the game was 44 yards shy of 1,000 yards. And if he gets 1,000 yards, it's going to do something pretty amazing. Georgia would become the first school ever to have back-to-back -back seasons with two 1,000-yard rushers with four different players. I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment in back-to-back -back years. Third down and one. Four minutes to go. Texas crowds the line. Good move by Holyfield. There's his mom, Tammy Petaway. We asked Elijah yesterday, the 12 children, any of them good athletes like you? He said, my brother, 21 years old, Eliezer, is the boxer yeah. in the group. He's a 155-pounder about to turn pro. He said it was great to grow up as the son of Evander Holyfield, very proud of his dad. Look out, Swift fumbles again! And Gary Johnson tried to scoop and score rather than just recover the fumble. B.J. Foster again involved in a big play to knock it out. And now Swift needs a little love and a return to the sideline. He has it securely, just, just loses it. B.J. Foster in there, but it didn't, wasn't like he put a helmet on the football. And everybody on that sideline trying to keep DeAndre Swift, one of their best players, keep his confidence up. Well, as a team, they've rushed for 34 yards. I said earlier, they average more than 251 a game. Play fake by Fromm. And a tackle, or was he down? Riley Ridley apparently knocked down. Devontae Davis didn't get him to the ground, and it's a big gainer for Georgia. P.J. Locke finally did make the tackle of the Texas 42. Yeah, it looked like it was just going to be a completion short of the first down. 
Does he yeah. land on the player and bounce up? I think that from that angle, it looked like Ridley was correct. And Bill Lamagne, our rules expert here in the booth, agrees. The replay booth does not stop it. Pac-12 officials, field and booth, and Jerry Meyerhoff, experienced replay official in the booth. 22-yard gain. 2.15 to the half. Two timeouts for Georgia. From down the field and off the hands of Nicole Hardman, at least one of them. Cade Mays was downfield quite a bit. Georgia lucky they didn't get a penalty on that play. I don't know if he didn't know the play or got confused, but it was a pass for sure. Cade Mays, who's in there at right guard, was clearly beyond three yards down the field on that play. Another one of those five-star freshmen. Battled some shoulder injuries this year. He's played right guard and left tackle, but he has a bright, bright future for this Georgia offensive line. The veteran is the center. Lamont Gilliard, 42nd consecutive start. Holy field. Did not break the tackle of Keandre Coburn, who lost his helmet. He's a true freshman out of Houston. So he knows the rules. Lost the helmet, has to go off. Uh, clock stoppage with 202 in the half to let him get to the sideline. And now it winds. Wouldn't be surprised to see a pass to DeAndre Swift here. He's fumbled it twice carrying the ball, but he is an outstanding receiver coming out of the backfield. Had six catches in their loss to Alabama the title game, 27 catches for the year. Makes him their number three receiver. Timeout Texas, 141 to go till halftime. This season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Georgia on the edge of field goal range right now with third down upcoming. Trailing 20 to 7, 141 to go in the half. Third down and six for Jake Fromm and the Bulldogs. Interesting to see if Todd Orlando in that timeout decides to bring pressure on Jake Fromm. He's played a lot of zone on third down. Third down's been a rough down for them this season. Particularly in the four games they lost, just about 50% teams were converting on third down. Losses to Oklahoma State, West Virginia, Oklahoma, and of course Maryland in the opener. It's a conversion. Riley Ridley with about a yard and a half extra beyond the sticks. Plenty of time now for Georgia. At the 31 yard line, a minute and a half to go in the half and two timeouts. George is five out of seven now on third down. The guy they got to keep an eye on, too, Isaac Nada, the tight end, has not been active in the passing game so far. Stayed in the block, and there's an incomplete pass. Holloman has really come on during the year, having a tough time here in the second quarter. Jim Cheney, the play caller. Up in the box. Mentioned Drew Brees earlier. Man, he knows very well. He was his offensive coordinator at Purdue. From up the seam and too high for Holloman. With Devontae Davis, senior. Honorable mention all Big 12 in coverage. Well, he had exactly what he wanted because the safety jumped on the crossing route of Hardman. So it's single coverage, just not a good throw by Jake Fromm. Threw the ball too high and too far behind him. If he throws that ball in front of him and lower, it's an easy touchdown for Holloman. Third down and 10. Swift, who's lost the ball a couple of times, back on the field. As Todd mentioned, excellent receiver. They bring a blitz right up the middle, and Fromm goes down. Anthony Wheeler, the outstanding senior linebacker, untouched 
Through the middle of that Georgia offensive line. Well, watch the center, Gilliard. He's going to point and just turn this way. Wheeler's going to come right up the middle. You got to protect inside first. Nobody picks up the closest guy that has a run at the quarterback. I got to think that's a bust on the protection. And Jake Fromm takes the sack. Most of the third downs prior to that, Todd Orlando has gone with zone. They've not pressured. And that's B.J. Foster being helped off the field. Again, remember, as Holly reported, Caden Stearns, their Big 12 freshman of the year on defense, did not play tonight. We thought we might see him. And whether or not this makes it more realistic that he plays, we'll see. Foster has been impressive here yeah. in the first half. Yeah, Stearns, they... as you saw, dressed out for the game. And... Now, what will Kirby Smart do? It looks like they're going to punt. Blankenship has a big leg. He made a 55-yard field goal in the Rose Bowl win over Oklahoma last year, which is the Rose Bowl game record. This will be about 57 indoors. They have had a couple of fakes this year, and Georgia fans don't want the recap of that history. The punt, little Jordan Humphrey, the fair catch at the nine. Foster heading to the locker room Monday on ESPN. The college football playoff national championship game. Presented by AT&T from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, the home of the San Francisco 49ers. The Tide and the Tigers again. Yeah. They played some compelling games in the five-year history of the college football playoff. Played for the national title in Glendale, Arizona, 2015, won by Alabama. They played for the title again in Tampa, 2016. Clemson winning it on the late throw to Hunter Renfro, and then Alabama, pretty one-sided game yeah, last, last year. year here in the semifinal. They struggled to throw the ball, Clemson, under 150 yards passing. Much better throwing team, obviously, this yeah. year with Trevor Lawrence now. Much more balanced. You know, people ask, is that you think it's good or bad for college football that it's Clemson and Alabama again? I, I think it's good because they're the two best. I mean, they're the two best teams, and if you want to get up there, you got to catch them. You got to find a way to beat them. You know, Georgia had Alabama beaten twice and didn't get it done. Won in the national championship game last year, and then they had a 14 point lead on two different occasions in the SEC championship game and, and didn't get it done. Neither team inclined to stop the clock here. As we traveled around all year time, we saw all of the top teams in person attended their practices. I think the three most impressive teams athletically were Alabama, Clemson, and Georgia. To me, the difference yeah. is this Georgia group is younger. 68% of the players are freshmen and sophomores. Now, there'll be a factor again in the playoff yeah. in the coming years. And now there is a timeout. But they are in a real fight right here tonight. I mean, there's no question. Now, it's obvious the absence of DeAndre Walker is huge. They're not being able to pressure Sam Ellinger. They do have one sack. But the bigger story has been the Texas defense in stopping the Georgia running game. They only have 29 yards rushing in the first half. That's the biggest story of the football game so far. They're two well-coached teams. You know, you watch what Todd Orlando's done here at Texas and where he's been previously. Yeah. He has earned his reputation as a rising star in coaching, for sure, the defensive coordinator for Texas. Now, Georgia could force a punt if they could stop this third down play. But Trey do. Watson stacked up. Will Kirby Smart use his last timeout? Yes, he will. With eight seconds to go, Julian Rochester and Tay Crowder. Combining on the stop. Pretty good use of the timeouts. I mean, they've got Bruszewski now, a freshman punter, who's going to have to go against pressure here. There's not going to be time to, to run any kind of offensive play. So you're going to sell out on this uh, punt rush and see if you can get to, the, get to the punter. And in this instance, if you're Ryan Bruszewski, you really just want to get the punt off. Catch it and get it off. Just catch it and get it out of there. Don't worry too much about where it goes. Uh, but that's that's the main thing. Catch the snap first. Get it out of there quick. Of course, a lot of football to be played here tonight. But I think it's obvious 
Texas yeah. is on the way back. They are. They, you know, they still don't have the depth, I don't think, of, a, of an Alabama, Clemson, or a Georgia. But they're recruiting to that. And, and I think they've got the belief and the culture and the, the attitude in the right place right now. And they've been impressive here in this first half of play. Well, they even kick it to Hardman. He's a very dangerous return man leading the SEC. 20 yards per punt return. Great job by Buczewski. In fact, it runs out the half. Former Australian rules football player. 52 yards. There is a flag down. It's at the 42 of Texas. Very few flags in the first half. Matter of fact, Georgia was not penalized at all. Texas twice for 10 yards. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 87, receiving team. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff to start the third quarter. Well, and remember, George is getting the football to start the third quarter, so any hopes of a good kickoff return to start the second half is kind of out the window at that point. Tyler Simmons called for the penalty. Just 118 yards of offense in the half for Georgia. Great first half for Tom Herman and the Texas Longhorns. Holly? Coach, you were worried about this rushing attack of Georgia who averages over 200 yards a game on, on the ground, but just 29 yards. What have you been effective doing up front? Well, I think the defensive staff is doing a good job of bringing pressure. We're playing really, really hard up front. Uh, and, the, again, the, the first down pressure uh, is something that, you know, we knew we were going to have to do to load the box. Uh, and our, our guys have survived on the perimeter for the most part. What do you want to try to establish more offensively in the second half? Uh, we got to run the ball between the tackles a little bit better. We've got great field position. Uh, this is a really good team we're playing, and uh, we can't settle for a bunch of field goals when we get down there in the red zone, so we're going to have to find a way to punch it in the end zone. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. The Indeed Halftime Report with Adnan and Jesse and Joey coming up right after these messages. What a start. Ellinger eludes the rush. Ellinger, touchdown, Texas. From man wide open, on target to Brian Herrien for the Georgia touchdown. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl from New Orleans. Texas raced out to a 17-0 lead as we head for the second half. It's 20-7. In favor of the Longhorns, welcome back. Happy New Year. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge joined again in a moment by Holly Rowe. The number that stands out in the first half, Georgia, leading rushing team in the yeah. SEC, just 29 yards rushing. Yeah, I thought Texas was definitely more locked in to start the game. They played with great fire, great passion. You heard Tom Herman talk to Holly, and I think it'll be a different second half. I think we'll see a different Georgia team in the second half, but they've got to get DeAndre Swift going he had minus four yards and a fumble because of the penalty against Georgia at the end of the half and Texas kicking off from midfield Tom Herman tries the onside kick and Georgia was ready for it I don't like it I don't either I don't like it at all defense is playing really well get the touch back him at the 20 here's a look at at and giving their best Bevo an hour before the game going after 62 pound Uga. And the defense feisty as well for the Longhorns yeah, at the start. The run defense was outstanding. They crowded the line of scrimmage. They brought extra bodies. They tackled well. And uh, again, they forced DeAndre Swift to put it on the ground twice. Only lost one of those fumbles. But uh, I don't like giving Georgia this kind of field position. You had a huge field position edge in the first half, and that was a big part of your success. Yeah, that's overthinking it a little bit. If you ask me, and here's Elijah Holyfield. That run gets him over 1,000 yards for the season. So both he and DeAndre Swift over 1,000, as Todd said in the first half, did the first school that back-to-back -back seasons with two 1,000-yard rushers involving four different yeah, people. Four different guys. Tony Michelle and Nick Chubb, both in the NFL. 
did it last year. I also don't like it almost says to your team if you're Texas you know I think even though we're ahead we have to do things yeah. like this. Yeah I, 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 don't, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah you said that quite articulately I might add. Well and here's the thing as you see another typical kind of run play on first down that that Texas had in the first half. Your advantage in field position in the first half you started on your own 45 Georgia started on their own 24. You were in their territory. Part of that was the turnover. Part of it was the punter for Georgia putting his knee down. But why start the second half and risk that? And Tom Herman told us yesterday because they are a game ground in small chunks, yeah. no 50 yard plays, they are a field position team. That's yeah. to a large extent got out of college football now with the way these offenses go up and down the field. But it's still particularly important for Texas. Brian Herrian. Defense trying to back up its coach and Brandon Jones the safety up near the line of scrimmage involved in that play You know the last three games of the season and that included the Big 12 championship game against Oklahoma Texas's run defense was the best that had been all season. They held their opponents to about 119 yards per game They held Oklahoma who was a great running team to under 150 yards and They're doing it again here today Third down and 11. Jake Fromm, 9 out of 15 passing for 89. Todd Orlando looks like he's going to bring a blitz. Five men come after Fromm. He throws on the run, up for grabs, and intercepted by P.J. Locke. Playing in his final game at the University of Texas. A huge interception to start the half for the Horns. Jake Fromm is trying to extend the play. He's going to try to leave the pocket and make a throw, but watch Anthony Wheeler, number 45, right there. He is going to get to Fromm, and Fromm's not able to get enough on this throw. He underthrows his intended receiver, Ridley, and P.J. Locke, who's sitting back there as a middle safety, makes the interception. Just the third of his career. Wheeler is a factor as a rusher. He's been that tonight. He was third on their team in sacks starting tonight. So Isaiah I, Wilson, yeah. the redshirt freshman right tackle, is really the only offensive lineman who hasn't missed time due to injury this year, is down on the field. Isaiah Wilson, the right tackle, walked off under his own power. Giant man, 6'7, 340 pounds on the freshman All SEC team. Sam Ellinger, 10 out of 13, passing for 90 yards. He's rushed for two touchdowns, seven carries, 27 yards. Throws a sinker and a little bit too low, off target for little Jordan Humphrey. Interesting name his older brother when he was born wanted his mother to name him in honor of Michael Jordan <laughs> So her compromise was to name him Lil Jordan L I L Jordan We we'll call him LJ around the Texas program Here's Andrew Beck To the 45 taken down by J.R. Reed Back one of the real valuable assets to this football team missed all of last year with an injury was still voted captain Very well respected well liked and with him coming back this year It's really solidified that tight end position as a blocker. He very versatile. They can use him as a receiver Flank him out He's added a lot to the Texas offense you know, the offense square Tim Beck no relation has talked that Andrew is really one of the most valuable players on their team Big third down and five, three minutes into the second half. Some twisting up front from Georgia. They harass Ellinger. He gets away again, does not get the first down. Chased down by Devontae Wyatt. And they'll mark him almost a full two yards short of the line to make. It's a good stop by the Georgia defense. Right now, Texas has a chance to set that field position mm -hmm. advantage again. They chose not to do it on the kickoff. And they have a chance to do it right here. Well, we mentioned the defense backed up their coach. I'm sure they appreciated. You know, he was willing yeah. to take a chance. 
And they've done that all year. Texas has only given up seven points off turnovers the entire season. Fewest in the country. Yeah. The onside kick wasn't a turnover, but the defense called upon to defend a shorter field than they might have. Buczewski's punt and a fair catch by Terry Godwin. 38 yards on the punt. Looks like Wilson's coming back. The Allstate Sugar Bowl, brought to you by Taco Bell's new Cravings Value Menu. Value beyond belief. And AT&T, more for your thing, that's our thing. A couple of injury updates for Georgia. Their right tackle, Isaiah Wilson, is back and will return in this game. 6'7", 340 pounds. He returns in a big way. And also B.J. Lock, who, or excuse me, um, B.J. Foster, who was taken to the locker room in the first half. For Texas, he is back out. He played their last defensive series. Looks good out there for the Longhorns. Well, I think that that Georgia has to throw the football on, on first down. The, right now, they're averaging two yards a play on first down. Jake Fromm in the first half was 0 for 4 throwing on first down, but Texas is overloaded. They're inviting them to throw on first down because they're overloading the line of scrimmage to stop the run on first down. And I think Georgia's got to make that adjustment here in this possession. We'll talk about the lack of the running game for Georgia, 39 yards, but Fromm's thrown for just 89 on 9 out of 16. He started 7 for 9 with a touchdown. He's 2 for 7 since with an interception. Elijah Holyfield. Athletic run for about 13 yards and a first down. Now that's a good first down run. They have not been able to do that. Nice job by the left tackle, Andrew Thomas, with a nice block on that play. His dad, four-time heavyweight champ, Evander Holyfield, here in New Orleans tonight. Very graciously posing for a lot of pictures before the game. Saw him down there on the sideline. Did you ask him for an autograph? No, I did not. He probably asked for yours. Sugar Bowl Hall of Famer Todd Blackledge tonight. DeAndre Swift. Got spun around, held on to the ball. He's fumbled twice, lost one. That's an 11-yard gain, and Georgia is on the move. Now, this is a nice job. Nice block by the wide receiver, Miko Hardman, number four. Sealed his man to the outside, and Swift, who has excellent cutting ability and vision, did a nice job cutting inside the block of his wide receiver. And that's got to be an encouraging sign for Jim Chaney to see DeAndre Swift with a run like that. James Coley next to him, quarterback coach, co-offensive coordinator. You know, Riley Ridley taken to the boundary by Chris Boyd. I looked at those first half stats, Sean, and I saw DeAndre Swift, five carries, minus four yards and a fumble, but he actually put it on the ground twice. And I saw Colin Johnson for Texas, no receptions. And I don't think either one of these teams can win the game if those two guys don't become a factor here in the last 30 minutes. They're just too important for their offenses to not be effective. From a deep handoff after a lot of maneuvering. That's what Jim Cheney gives him a lot of latitude because of his intelligence at the line of scrimmage. B.J. Foster in on another stop. And here's third down and a long one, nearly two, about a yard and a half. This has not been a great part of the offense for Georgia through the year. Now, they brought Brian Harrion back in. It looks like they want him in on the third down and short. But now they're putting him in a wing position. Kind of an unusual formation here. Empty backfield now for Jake Fromm. Nicole Hardman back and forth. Blitz off the corner and a good play by Georgia. They threw away from the blitz side to Brian Harrion. He got the first down just shy of midfield at the 48. Brian Harrion's given him some good plays. He hasn't been in a lot of snaps, but he's been involved in every play that he's been in. Ran for a couple short yardage plays. Nice catch there on third down. And when Swift fumbled a couple times, that yeah. looked like it gave Harrion more of a chance. He's run hard. He's had a couple of catches. The godson of the late quarterback Steve McNair. First and ten, Texas crowds the line. Fromm given a lot of time. 
And an errant throw. Yeah. Most accurate quarterback in the SEC and eighth in the country in completion percentage is Missed a couple that he wouldn't ordinarily hit, looking for Terry Godwin there. And you just don't get many opportunities like that. They they had run the ball so well, they went max protection with a great play action fake, and they had a wide open receiver, and Jake Fromm overthrew him. That's two poor throws on single coverage down the field that Jake's had today, and that's not typical for him. Justin Fields, the backup, who played in 12 out of 13 games coming into tonight, has not played at all. Brian Harry in the ball carrier. And when we asked Jim Chaney yesterday, is there a package for Justin Fields? He said, you know, I'm not sure. He like what Fromm does, getting us in the right plays. Yeah. They admire Justin Fields and his talent. They hope he stays. Kirby Smart said, you know, we're trying to say to him, well, if you're going to go someplace as a transfer, you're going to sit out. Right. So why not sit here if you want a little separation in class between you and Jake Fromm and learn and get better? But as Kirby said, that's a hard thing to convince the number one recruit in the entire country. He needs to sit and wait behind someone else. More pressure and another quick throw. That one off target for DeAndre Swift. And it's fourth down. And the punt team comes out. Well, again, another poor throw by Jake Fromm. That, that's two on this drive. Not sure that one would have converted the first down. The other one would have been a touchdown. But just not what you expect to see from a guy who's coming into the game nearly 70% completion. Jake Camarda, the freshman to punt. Brandon Jones is back deep. 21-yard average. He had an 11-yard shank. First punt of the night went 53 yards, but he put his knee down before punting, and they marked the ball where his knee went down on a low snap. Nicole Hardman downs it. Good job by Camarda, and Texas will start at the six. Nearly midway through the third quarter at the All-State Sugar Bowl. They are the Texas are upon you. We mentioned in the Big 12 championship game, Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, told us Sam Ellinger believes he was born to be the quarterback at yeah. the University of Texas. He announced his commitment in 2015 with that baby photo, hook em horns from Austin Westlake High School, the alma mater of Drew Brees, honoring the Saints quarterback in his home stadium with a high school jersey. Tough field position for Ellinger in Texas here. Keontae Ingram dropped by Jonathan Ledbetter. And when you break records, set in high school by Drew Brees, you have done something. Yeah, no doubt. Well, this record, is... I'm not saying he's Drew Brees <laughs> or Tim Tebow. He's an excellent quarterback and getting better, just a sophomore. He's out across the 11. Yeah. This might be the most important down of the game for him right here. It's third down. They're deep in their own territory. The first time the field position has really swung against him, he has to be smart with his decision right here. With seven minutes to go in the third quarter, he's on target. Lil Jordan Humphrey got leveled by Jawan Taylor, but held on, and they get the first down by a yard. So that dynamic duo has been reduced to just one tonight. It's fifth catch of the night for Lil Jordan Humphrey, and still nothing from Colin Johnson. Again, six foot four, 225 pound slot receiver. He's used to getting banged a little bit. Makes that catch for the first down. Well, Jordan and Johnson are juniors juggling catch, and that might have been a lateral, so good thing for Texas that Ingram held on. J.R. Reed, the tackle. Now, both Humphrey and Colin Johnson have put their names in for right. the evaluation of the NFL draft. Texas has four players in all who did that. Tom Herman thinks all four will come back, including the two receivers. Colin Johnson, we visited yesterday, said... He would wait till after this game to make his decision. Ingram carries for another first down. Well, this is impressive right now. They started inside their own 10 yard line. They've been methodical and physical running the football. Sam hits the big throw on third down, and now they're outside to the 31 yard line. Three receivers to the left. 
It's Watson. Yeah, you know, would you believe when the night started, Todd, that Texas would have outrushed yeah. Georgia with five and a half to go in the third quarter and comfortably so. You mentioned earlier Texas, one of the worst rushing teams in the country coming in, and Georgia, number one in the SEC. It's 108 to 68 on the ground in favor of the Horn. No, I would not have thought that at all, but the two games that Georgia lost, they were outrushed by LSU and Alabama. And their season low rushing total at LSU, 113 yards. Watson's been a good receiver as well. Brenton Cox and Tyson Campbell, the tackle. They go quickly, want to prevent a substitution, a blitz, and Ellinger runs through it, and they're out to midfield with another Texas first down. Well, they're going to pull the backside guard, Vahe, right up in here, and then watch Beck, the tight end, get a block. This is just quarterback power run. I mean, this is by design all the way. Ellinger knows how to get that first down. Now he's straight back to pass with plenty of time. Going deep for Devin Duvernay in single coverage. And he did not make the catch. The true freshman, Tyson Campbell, there for Georgia. This is a good throw, and it's very good coverage by Tyson Campbell. He's right there. He finds the ball. He plays through the hands. You can't play the cornerback position any better than that. He was a five-star recruit coming out of American Heritage High School. This year in South Florida, Tyson Campbell, second and ten. Ingram throwing the ball to the backs has been a nice wrinkle for Tim yeah. Beck, the offensive coordinator. Natrez Patrick made the stop for Georgia. Ingram's third catch. Watson's had a couple. Here's Tim Beck. Offensive coordinator, been at Ohio State, Nebraska. Very balanced offense for Texas tonight. Good mix of run and pass. It's a pass on third and six, a flag down, a deep throw, double coverage. Looks like two Bulldogs fighting each other for it, and J.R. Reed has the ball. There is a flag well, throw where you'd expect an offensive yeah. holding penalty, but you never know. It's probably going to be holding. And the interception, you hate to see that if you're Tim Beck, but it's almost like a punt as well. It's mm -hmm. third down. Holding, number 77, offense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is the interception. First down, Georgia. That Patrick Vahe for the hold right here, number 77. Yeah, that's a wrestling takedown, easy call. And again, you hate the interception, but this is just as effective as a punt. Heck of a play by J.R. Reed. Does catch. he have it? Wow. Well, this is one that Texas might not want to go in its favor. Looks like the ball hits the ground if we continue to go. Yeah. Interception. But it'll be fourth the down. You'd play, think that Texas would punt. And if you told Tom Herman if you're going to punt, Georgia have the ball at the 10, you'd probably take that, right? Yeah, no doubt. We'll see if it is an interception. When we come back, four minutes to go, third quarter at the All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. After the replay review, here's the call from Michael Mothershed. Is it an interception? After review, the ball hit the ground. It's an incomplete pass. The penalty is holding number 77 will still be declined. Fourth down. Yeah, definitely got it right on the replay. Heck of an effort by J.R. Reed. And, you know, for Texas, the best part about this is they at least are, have a chance to flip the field. They started this possession on their own six-yard line. It looked like Georgia had a chance to back them up. 
And they will punt. Certainly in plus field position at the Georgia 47. Tom Herman might have pondered going for it. Ryan Buchevsky on to punt. Texas ran 11 plays from its own six. Took 341 off the clock. And it's going to wind up right around the 10 again. Georgia might have gained a foot or two. 36 yard kick. Wild card weekend starts Saturday and it begins on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes at 4.30 Eastern time. It's the Colts. What a year they've had. Taking on the AFC champion Houston Texans. From NRG Stadium, coverage starts with postseason NFL countdown at 3 Eastern. Big part of the Colts' success, the return to health. Yeah. Andrew Luck, Georgia native Deshaun Watson at the helm for Bill O'Brien in the Houston Texans. Both teams got the very rough starts this yeah. year. Rallied to make the playoffs. Should be a fun game. Jake Fromm on first down. Off his back foot, man open, and the ball knocked away from Jeremiah Holloman by B.J. Foster. In for the injured Caden Stearns, and if Stearns much better than what Foster has seen tonight, <laughs> Stearns and Foster is that a mattress? <laughs> it's going to be a good safety duo in the Big 12, that's for sure. Perfect timing by Foster. He just read the eyes of Holloman as soon as he saw him go for the ball. He just ripped that arm right between. The arms of the receiver knocked the ball out. Excellent play. Tremendous performance by this Texas defense tonight. Georgia has not found a rhythm. DeAndre Swift ducks ahead to the 15 with P.J. Locke there. Three and a half to go third quarter. Third down, seven, just across the 14. Georgia's six of 11, and that's, you know, Texas has not been good on third down percentage-wise. Big opportunity here with the field position in their favor. Isaac Donald went in motion. Almost looked like he cut up the field too early. From knocked down short of the line to make by a couple. Jeffrey McCulloch, Jr., from Houston, Texas there. Texas showed pressure. They had five guys around the line of scrimmage. They dropped out and only rushed three, and Jake Fromm had nowhere to go with the football. And then they made the tackle short of the first down. Another beautiful defensive stand by this Longhorn defense. Here's Jake Camarda. With little Jordan Humphrey back deep. Marta has a big leg. He had three punts of more than 60 during the regular season. That's another boomer. 51 yards. And a fair catch by Humphrey at the 30. The last time we saw this Texas defense in the Big 12 championship, Oklahoma gained 508 yards on him. And of course, Kyler Murray, the Heisman Trophy winner, had a spectacular game. Georgia, one of the most prolific offenses in college football, particularly in the SEC. Only 174 yards of total offense right now. Well, Kirby Smart at halftime told Holly Rowe, we'll find out what we're yep. all about in the second half. And this second half performance is a dud. Brief stretch in the first half where it looked like they were picking up some momentum. It hasn't lasted long. Ellinger, lots of time, weaving back near the line of scrimmage. That's good discipline coverage down the field by Tyson Campbell and the Georgia defense. They were trying to fake. They've thrown that little swing pass out to the backs a lot today. They tried to show that, fake it, and get a ball down the field. Georgia was not fooled by the action. Sam Ellinger had to scramble forward for no gain. Is it too early if you're Texas to take a little more time off the clock? I don't want to lose your aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. I get that. If you want to stay in the huddle, maybe, or that, but but stay aggressive. The big difference between last year and this for Texas, they've won close games. They haven't blown fourth quarter leads. Last year, they lost four games that they had the lead in the fourth quarter. Uh, first down run for Trey Watson. Now the Georgia defense got sucked inside. Really nice block by the right tackle, Sam Cosme. Evan Duvernay with a block on the perimeter and a nice run. 
And again, the running game, the biggest surprise of the football game is the Texas running game and run defense. Rush for 131. Ellinger, deep throw, up for grabs. There's, There's the Colin one. Johnson yep. out of the witness protection program with Eric Stokes in coverage. First down inside the 25 of the 23. Eric Stokes is in great position. The problem is Eric Stokes is listed at 6'1", and Colin Johnson is 6'6". He goes up and high points the ball. The ball's a little bit underthrown, and Colin makes the catch. Texas with a minute to go in the third quarter. And that's what they do with those two big receivers. They throw that football up and let them make a chance. Uh, you know, you call it a 50-50 ball. The defender has a 50% chance of making the play, but with those big bodies and the timing, it's, it's a high percentage play. That's what Tom Herman said. That's how we make explosive plays. It's our best way to do it. The jump balls to the big receivers. This is a short throw to Colin Johnson. The officials say wind the clock and they do not have to snap it again. Here in the third quarter 55th bowl game for both Texas and Georgia. Only Alabama has played in more. They, they know that Georgia out. knows they don't have to snap it. So they hurried to the line and caught them. Yeah well Kirby called a timeout. So he, he caught the timeout before the penalty was going to happen. Yeah, that's what I meant. Taught them yeah, running people right. on and off to force the timeout. Now again, this is a defense that tries to substitute a lot by personnel, and Texas saw all this mass substitution, tried to get to the line and call the play quick, and Kirby said, we're going to get caught with too many guys on the field. Smart timeout by Kirby Smart. And that's not redundant. <laughs> it's mayhem, right? right? It's all states, right. mayhem. It all flows together, doesn't it? Kirby Smart. Obviously very actively involved. He's always actively involved on the defense, even when Mel Tucker was there, but he has clearly taken the lead tonight. Got to be alert for Ellinger run here. He's got his tight end back to the right, three receivers to the left. Ellinger. He wanted to pull up and throw it perhaps to Beck. Yeah, I think you're right. And he ran out of bounds. So if Texas had elected not to go to that hurry up and try to catch Georgia, they wow. could have run out the clock in this quarter. Now it looks like they're going to hurry and go for it on fourth and one. Georgia lined up. Ellinger, first down. I think Tom Herman realizes. We can't settle for field goals anymore. We have got to get a touchdown on this drive. We may not have the field position edge anymore like we've had it. We got to go for the touchdown. All right, all right, all right. Says Matthew McConaughey on the Texas sideline. On to the fourth quarter of the All-State Sugar Bowl back after these messages. ESPN celebrating 150 years of college football. We look forward to that coming in this new year. Certainly there'll be a lot of a review of the history of these two great programs. Meeting for just the fifth time in Texas. The underdog leading 20 to 7 and on the move as we start the fourth quarter. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe. Another night, Sam Ellinger performing well, passing and running, and Andrew Beck a little too anxious. Yeah, there was a shift by the Georgia defensive line, and I think it kind of caused that reaction by Andrew Beck. Ball start, number 47, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. The third penalty on Texas. Georgia has yet to be penalized in the ball game. First down and 15 from the 16. Ellinger lofts it up. One of those jump balls. And Colin Johnson couldn't snare it with Eric Stokes all over him. Eric Stokes played tough on that one. 
This is a good throw by Sam. He beats the blitz. He gives his guy a chance. And I thought Colin Johnson had his hands on it, but Eric Stokes just fought the ball out of there. Excellent effort by Eric Stokes. Texas goes quickly. You know, to me, Ty, that looks like they're trying to set up another one of those Tebow-esque plays where the quarterback starts toward yeah. the line like it's a run. He pulls up and throws the little pop yeah. pass a couple times that it looked like Ellinger yeah. might do it. Well, they kind of did on the run to the right sideline in the third quarter, the end of the third quarter. It looked like he was looking to throw to Beck, but it wasn't there. I like this formation. We saw this in the Big 12 championship where they put Humphrey and Colin Johnson on the same side of the field. So he checked and Georgia checked out of their defense. Four seconds to snap it. Ellinger steps away from the rush. Takes off running. Ellinger gets walloped and continues to fight. It looked like he got the first down. Wow, this is a tough dude, man. I'm going to tell you what. I don't know if Georgia has played a quarterback that runs with this kind of physicality. He is not going down. You know, Kirby Smart told us this in our meeting. He said, there's no games after this. The guy's going to run the football. They don't have to worry about resting him. And Tim Tebow has to love that because mm -hmm. this guy is a physical, competitive guy. There he comes again, feeling his way. The official on the near sideline says he's not in. Wow. But from up here, it looked like he was. But the line judge, Dale Keller, obviously well positioned. Was the knee down before he broke the plane. Mm. Wow, I think we'll take a look at that. Texas fans booing. And it will go upstairs. Yeah. The ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. It's probably good for Sam Ellinger to get a little break here, get some water, get some air in the lungs, take another look at it. Some pylon can. There's his butt down. Where was the football? I, it wasn't a knee. His rear end hit the ground. He's protecting the football with two arms, so he's not reaching the ball past the goal line. Well, he has taken some shots. That one from Richard LeCount. Let's bring in Bill LaMagna, our rules expert. What did you see, Bill? Well, as you said, the, his rear end hits the ground. He's got the ball tucked in tight. It appears that that ball is just short yeah. of the goal line. So I think we've got a pretty good call by that wing official marking him short. Yeah, well, certainly we haven't seen anything conclusive to change the call. At least I haven't. Would you concur with that? Well, obviously you would because you've already said you thought he was down. I've got the same shot as the replay booth on the one. And it went After to review. The ruling on the field stands as called. I believe it would be second down, yeah. wouldn't it? Should be Correction. second. Second down. Yep. All right. Second down. Well, again, Tom Herman went for it on fourth down, knowing that a touchdown is essential on this drive. At this point in the game, you've got this team, this higher ranked team on the ropes. You cannot settle for a field goal. It has to be a touchdown. I would expect to see Sam Ellinger run the football again. And you know he wants to. There he goes to the left. Still no signal. And he didn't get in this time either, apparently. He was following Daniel Young, backup running back in there as a lead blocker. Daniel Young is the biggest back they have. And he's protecting the football. Will be the third time will be at a charm. No. Wow. And now the, the Georgia out. defense. Although his forward progress had been stopped. Tyler Clark helping yank him back. Brenton Cox in there as well. How about the Georgia defense? Bowing up at the right time. 
expecting the 230 pound quarterback to run holding the point at the line of scrimmage and bringing up another fourth down decision for Tom Herman. So what do you do? I mean, if you kick the field goal and it's a chip shot, that's a 16 point lead. That's two touchdowns and two, two, two point conversions Georgia would need. I know you've been very physical and you pride yourself on that last night uh, all season long and all night tonight. So that's what they're doing. And Ellinger lunging into the end zone. Looked like he was wobbling as he got to the goal line, but he made it on fourth down. He got all four carries and scores his third touchdown of the night. He didn't get a full head of steam. He had to elude Richard LeCount right in the backfield. Now, there's the knee down, the right knee, but the ball looks like this time he extended it. The knee is down, but the ball looks to be extended as the knee is down to the white chalk. Well, the Georgia fans want a replay review, and of course it will be viewed. The the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. No On. knee down yet. Now it is. Right. Tough so, to see the ball, but. So the knee's down there. Mm -hmm. The ball is in his right arm, and, and unlike the play before where he had it tucked in tight, this time he's reaching the ball as he's going down. It and was to called me, a touchdown. You, you can't see any of the ball behind his elbow, so all the balls from his elbow closer to the goal line. There wasn't much room from his elbow to the goal line, so I would think this would stand yeah. as called, Bill Lamagne. I totally agree with you, Sean McDonough. We do not have indisputable video evidence. They've had some really tight goal line plays here. This play, I believe, is going to stand. Touchdown. Mm -hmm. Pylon Cam is a good friend to the replay people. <laughs> We've had some excellent shots the last couple of games from our camera people. Just outstanding. Kirby Smart hoping for good news. Right. It doesn't seem to any of the three of us up here that that is likely to happen in this instance, and now they have a lot of work to do. Yeah. But a heck of a goal line stand nonetheless. I mean, four plays, four cracks at it. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. And in the end, even though it took four plays, it works to the benefit of Texas. They took right. more time off the clock. Right. And give Tom Herman credit. I think a lot of coaches in that instance would have gotten to 16. But now it's a three score game and they're going to go for two points. We talked a lot yesterday about physicality we used yeah. that word a lot and I think he believes in this team's physicality and toughness and they did eventually win the battle at the goal line just enough. 14 play drive the try for two Johnson with Tyson Campbell all over him. Managed to take it in. They sent four wide receivers to the wide side of the field. They isolate Colin Johnson one on one against Tyson Campbell. And they say, big fellow, make a play. 11.49 to go. Texas with a three touchdown lead. Three rushing touchdowns tonight for Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger giving him 16 for the year. That's the single season Texas record which was 14 by Vince Young and Don Wigginton who played back in 1971. Here's me Cole Hartman Georgia desperately needs a big return and it's a good return to the 34 time for our Capital One rewarding performance. Well, the Texas defense is who we are saluting at this point. Causing some confusion. Gilliard, the center, trying to direct pass protections. Anthony Wheeler slips in for the sack. Unaccounted for. Showing different looks, different stunts. Anthony Wheeler again forcing the underthrow that was intercepted by P.J. Locke. This time they're showing pressure, dropping out, forcing 
Jake Fromm up in the pocket, tackling him short of the first down. Georgia's offense held to 174 yards and only seven points so far. And they need to operate with urgency now, down by three touchdowns. Good catch. It's Charlie Werner on a ball thrown behind him. And they're into Texas territory to the 45-yard line, 22-yard pickup. And going up-tempo, Charlie Warner, nephew. Of... Check down to DeAndre Swift, and he's out of bounds, taken out by Anthony Wheeler at the 40. She's going to say Charlie Warner, nephew of Scott Warner, who was one of the honorees in the Sugar Bowl Hall of Fame. Defensive back had a couple interceptions in their national championship win over Notre Dame. Todd Blackledge also part of the class and shrine tonight. DeAndre Swift, nifty moves. We talked to Charles Amena, who yesterday said, I've never seen a running back that I played yeah. against who can cut and change direction as well and quickly as DeAndre Swift. Well, the key to his cutting is he does not slow down or, or lose speed when he cuts. That, that's what's so unique about it. He wasn't 100% healthy for half the season this year. Had surgery on both groins last year, but the last six or seven weeks, he's been much better. And four games over 100 yards rushing. Deep throw from... And the catch not made by Terry Godwin. P.J. Locke had the coverage. A long way to go in this one, Todd, but it's way too simple. If people analyze this game as well. Georgia just wasn't into it. They thought they should have been in the playoff. You know, Texas has demonstrated it's a really good team. Has yeah. outplayed them. Has earned the score such as it is right now. They've executed well. They've been more physical. They've made more plays. And more talent coming. As they're trying to uptick the recruiting just as Georgia did. Here's Jeremiah Holloman inside the five-yard line. 31-yard play. Georgia swiftly on the move. Ten and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Tight formation. Holloman gets on the crossing route. Chris Boyd got bumped a little bit by Isaac Nauta. That knocked him off coverage. Jake Fromm hit him. And Jake Fromm hits Miko Hardman for the Georgia touchdown. Well, they needed to go quickly, and they did. Well, that time, the tempo caught Texas. P.J. Locke was responsible for coverage. Watch P.J. Locke. He's right here. He's responsible for that guy right there. He's too late getting there. The ball snapped, and Jake Fromm gets his team in the end zone very quickly. Yeah, a minute and 24 seconds to go 67 yards and six plays. Hardman's seventh touchdown catch of the year. And here's Rodrigo Blankenship. You know, watching a couple of those games this afternoon, Kentucky had a big lead on Penn State. LSU had a big lead on UCF, and both those teams fought back. They didn't win, but they sure made it interesting in the fourth quarter. The Allstate Sugar Bowl, brought to you by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Mercedes-Benz Vans, the all-new Sprinter, built for you. And Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Look at the Sugar Bowl, most outstanding players from the last four games. Georgia with a touchdown to tighten it up. 28-14 Texas, 10-25 to go. And here's tonight's PlayStation Player Index. The night for Sam Ellinger, who has set the single season Texas record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. He's also tied the Sugar Bowl game record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. Three. Nice. Set by you to Jack Mildred. I know it wasn't you. <laughs> 1972 for Oklahoma against Auburn. Of course, he was a great running quarterback. Yeah. Rodrigo Blankenship, it's a touchback, Holly. Well, you guys are talking about did Georgia want to be in this game. I can tell you one Georgia player who wants to be in this game, and that is their junior safety, J.R. Reed. He has shown great leadership over here on the bench. Before the offense started that series, he was saying, look, we're going to run down and score right now. It's up to us to get the ball back. He's trying to get his guys fired up. He's being emotional, showing leadership over here on the sideline, just trying to get some juice 
on this Georgia defense right now when they need it most. Certainly a team leader. One of the best players on that Georgia defense. Last two possessions for Texas, they've run 11 plays and 14 plays. And that's a drop. Andrew Beck, a little bit about a seven-yard gain. Andrew Beck looked like he wasn't expecting the football. It was a little bit low, but he looked like he wasn't expecting the ball to come to him. I like throwing on first down. I like that Texas wants to stay aggressive, but when you don't connect, second and ten plays into the hands of the defense. You mentioned Texas has done a much better job protecting leads this season, but one of the great games of the year in college football in the regular season, their battle with Oklahoma when they squandered a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter wow. and then won it in the final seconds on a field goal. Trey Watson, Georgia players think the ball's out. Appears Texas and Watson got it back. Elijah Rodriguez also there, the guard. It's a first down for the Longhorns at the 37 yard line. Ran the counter play. The ball did come out, but Watson got it back. They pulled the backside guard and tackle. They've not shown that action too much. Really strong, powerful run for the first down by Watson. He was having himself a heck of a ball game. 84 yards now, 14 carries. Texas has rushed for 168. Their average is 151. They're doing this against the number five team in the country. And they beat Oklahoma in the regular season. The Sooners also ranked number five. If they can pull this off, Todd, it'll be one of the biggest wins in a long time. Yeah, you know, down. canvassing some of the Texas people. Perhaps the biggest win since they won the national championship in 2005. Yeah. Bet you out. The USC incredible football game the pinnacle the height of the Texas program under Mac Brown at that point second and seven this time Ellinger in no hurry as we approach nine minutes to go they brought pressure he got a block from Keontae Ingram and turned the corner and then slid down in bounds but short and they're going to bring the ball back where the slide started, which is the rule in part to protect quarterbacks in college football. And they put it back at the 43, so they'll need four on third down. Well, again, you've got Colin Johnson and Lil Jordan Humphrey on the same side to the short side of the field up here. Georgia runs the blitz, and this time they get home. Ellinger wrapped up and taken down back inside the 40-yard line. Well, they ran the twist inside. Devontae Wyatt's going to come on the twist. The linebacker's coming this way. Watch Devontae Wyatt come on the twist. He's the guy that's going to come free to the quarterback. Patrick Vahe, the left guard, late on that pickup in the twist. Well executed by the Georgia defense, and they'll get the football back quickly. We don't have many sacks. You mentioned earlier, 22 all year entering tonight. That was their second of this one, and a huge one. Ryan Buczewski punts. Almost took a little too much time. Excellent Halfway direction. through the fourth quarter, and a good directional kick out of bounds inside the 20. He's had a good night tonight. That's 48 with no return. Georgia well below its season averages, but they had by far their best drive of the night on the last possession to make it a two touchdown game. Their fans fully engaged now. Exactly midway through the fourth quarter, Texas, which has not trailed tonight, leads 28 to 14. Jake Fromm, 16 for 27 for 165. Two touchdown passes and interception. A blitz up the middle. Gary Jackson takes him down. With the help from Chris Nelson. 
Oh, another first down blitz. Todd Orlando calling it again. Here's Gary Johnson. Times it perfectly. And they just bring more guys than Georgia can block. Kind of backs into him and then gets there along with Chris Nelson to get the sack. <laughs> Nelson, a team captain, playing in his last game. From blasted as he threw. B.J. Foster came on a safety blitz and wow. delivered a big hit. Todd Orlando coming <laughs> after the Georgia quarterback. Two plays in a row. This is from the short side of the field. He comes off the slot. Good clean hit. And I'll tell you what, Jake Fromm, Fromm feels that on this critical third down play right now. Would you come after him again? Georgia's done a terrible job up front no. with the running backs picking up these blitzes. I wouldn't blitz on this one. It's third and 13. Play zone, make him throw underneath. Creeping up. And they rush five from too deep. Intended for Tyler Simmons, who didn't seem to pick up the ball. Chris Boyd had the coverage, and Georgia has to punt. Well, they did bring pressure, and the receiver has to see that. If he sees that, he's got to look for the ball quicker. Jake Fromm got rid of it. The receiver was not ready for it. How about that? Three plays in a row, Todd Orlando said, okay, we're going to go get him, and we're going to see if he makes a play, he makes a play, but we're not going to let him go down the field like he did the well, last thing we've seen the Texas coaches today, Todd, they're playing with a nothing-to-lose mentality. Yeah. Going for it on fourth down, the onside kick to start the half, blitzing with the lead, trying to keep the pressure on. Big punt again by Jake Camarda, and a fair catch made by little Jordan Humphrey. 54-yard punt. Here's a look at tonight's All-State Mayhem moment and Todd for Georgia in the first half, especially a few mayhem moments, including the knee down on the punt snap, wiped out a 53-yard punt by Jake Camarda. DeAndre Swift's fumbled a couple of times, lost one. Yeah, and both of those first two plays, this interception happening in the third quarter, but field position has been such a huge advantage for Texas all night, and those plays all factored in that advantage for the Longhorns. We have the ball back with 6.43 to go, leading 28 to 14. Sam Ellinger's been the star of the night on offense for Texas. He gave it off to Trey Watson, who's had a very nice night in his last game for the Longhorns, and he's ahead to the 40 for a first down gain of five yards. Yeah, I mean, Watson's got 89 yards rushing. And he's running hard in between the tackles. You know, that's what Tom Herman told Holly at halftime. We've got to get better have a little more success running between the tackles, and they've done that here in the second half. There's Trey Watson, the graduate transfer from Cal. He started eight games in three seasons in Berkeley and uh, has been a starter the whole season this year, so a nice cap to his career. They stick with him. And he's tackled around the legs by Tyler Clark. And Kirby Smart's not going to let the ball game go too much deeper before he starts using his timeouts. As a matter of fact, he's going to do it right now, and he's left with one. Second charge timeout, George. Well, third down and four upcoming. Monday on ESPN will have the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T, Levi Stadium, Santa Clara, California. Alabama and Clemson, number one versus number two. Each team made a change from the quarterback of a year ago to a tongue of Iloa took over for Jalen Hurts before the year started. They went to Trevor Lawrence early in the year at Clemson. And both teams got what they want. Yeah. More effectiveness in the passing game. Well, and the two semifinal wins. I mean, both quarterbacks played outstanding football games. Notre Dame took the runaway early. Trevor Lawrence lit him up in the second quarter, and a healthy Tua was unstoppable in the other game. Todd and I will be there with Holly for the ESPN radio broadcast. Third down and four. Is that a catch? Yes. Little Jordan Humphrey. Able to take it in. That's a big conversion. 
on a six yard gain. Just such a big body. He runs that slant. Sam throws it low and to the inside and pretty hard to defend. If you don't disrupt him off the line of scrimmage. That ball was a sinker too. It Sam's sure throwing was. a couple sinkers, but that one was only a six yard route. So it wasn't too low. Tell it again to make sure it was a catch by Humphrey. And now Texas going to use as much clock as they can. Trey Watson. Sam Ellinger tonight has carried the ball 21 times. That's his season high. He had 19 carries in the Red River game against Oklahoma, the game they won in October. And uh, we knew, I mean, that this is the last game, and he wants the ball. Not sure how many more times he'll carry it in this one, but he's set a season high already today. Trey Watson with that. Minimal gain enough to give him 93 yards for the game, matching his high of the season. He had that against Iowa State as well in a mid November game. Keontae Ingram takes over. A little dancing behind the line of scrimmage. Did well to spin ahead for a couple. And now Kirby Smart will use the last timeout after the Malik Herring tackle with 4.20 to go. It's a 30 second timeout for the final. Talked about Ellinger. We've talked about Watson. You know, this offensive line is has held up. They've played well tonight, and you know this year they've had much better continuity with their offensive line. Last year they had to use eight different starting lineups. Plus they had lost their tight end Andrew Beck before the season started. They didn't really have a tight end. They blocking tight end. This year they've had three different starting combinations, but the same group for the last eight games. And, uh, and they have held players. their own. Yeah. I mean, Patrick Vahe, the left guard, honorable mention all Big 12. This is 45th and final start. Zach Shackelford, the center, first team all conference. They're really helping Calvin Anderson, the big left guard, number, uh, left tackle number 66, was a grad right. transfer from Rice. He was two times all conference USA. Elijah Rodriguez, the right guard. Samuel Cosme, talented freshman right tackle. It's a good group. Big play again. They just converted on third down. Just a three man rush, a quick slant. Humphrey bounces off the hit and keeps on going. And finally taken out of bounds on the far sideline with a first down. 16 yard gain. Well, this time they ran the slant from the wide side. You see Beck. Now that's that could be offensive pass interference. Andrew Beck ran into. The defender that was responsible for covering little Jordan Humphrey it was not called and Texas got the conversion Adam Anderson had the first shot at him and did not get him down and they're starting to feel it in the Texas sections here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome under four minutes to go clock running no timeouts for Georgia Deontay Ingram ball protection obviously priority number one now for anybody handling it for Texas. Yeah, you know, I went back and looked at that play. It, it, that was not a block downfield because Lil Jordan Humphrey came right back to the line of scrimmage. It was by design. He caught it right at the line of scrimmage. So those guys can block downfield. Well executed for that big conversion. Three minutes to go. Trey Watson. Loses yardage. You hear the Texas fans chanting overrated at Georgia. You know, to their credit, we talked to them yesterday. They didn't make a big deal about not getting the college football play. I think Jonathan Ledbetter, the defensive end, said it very well. And we had two losses. Notre Dame didn't have any. Yeah. Uh, he understood. There would have been a lot of angst around the country if a two loss Georgia team got in ahead of the other teams that did right. get in. And he said, We had our chance against Alabama in the conference championship game. We didn't do it. So let's go out here tonight and prove how good we are. 
They're not going to do that. They blitz. Ellinger, the dump off to Colin Johnson. Wrestled down by Eric Stokes, but Georgia can't stop the clock, and they're under two minutes to go. Tom Herman probably let this one go all the way down and call a timeout. On the play clock, he's got 30 seconds on that play clock, so he'll use all that time. One of the players on the field for Texas gesturing at the crowd to make some noise, and they are obliging, the Longhorn players. This is an impressive win for Texas, it appears. I mean, I, you know, there was a, it was a huge win when they beat Oklahoma in their rivalry game. They had a couple other tough games. You know, they played nine one-possession games this year. They went six and three in those games. That was a big turnaround from the last First couple years. Out, Texas. They but beat four teams that were ranked during the course of the year. And perhaps a little bit ahead of schedule for Texas. Yeah. And Tom Herman talked about there's still the big need there. They don't have the talent level like a Georgia, Clemson, and Alabama, although tonight their talent level was more than good enough. Well, the layoff really helped them, the rest, because they had a lot of guys that played a lot of snaps for lack of depth at certain positions. So that layoff and ability to rest was evident with how fast and fresh they looked tonight. You like this decision? Kick the field goal? Yeah, I do. Make sure the execution is good. The snap and hold were good, but the uh, kick is wide right from Cameron Dicker. So very faint hope on the Georgia side. They get the ball back with a minute 10 to go, down by two touchdowns. And no timeouts. No timeouts. I think, as we said earlier, the Georgia talent level, we didn't see it tonight. Right. And there's a lot of things going on again. Give the credit to Texas. They won yeah, the game. For sure. But as we've traveled around and you just look at who's won over the years in college football, it has a lot to do with who has the highest rated recruiting class. Yeah. Georgia's had them. They're having another. And I think next year there will be, don't you think, top Absolutely. five for sure? Per Absolutely. Season? Well, and as you said, I mean, 88 of their 129 players on their roster, 68% are freshmen or sophomores. I mean, that's, you know, they are built to be good for a long time. From has to check it down. That really doesn't do them any good, although there's a flag down. Isaac Nada hit up high by Devontae Davis. Now, this is probably going to be called a targeting foul. Personal foul, targeting number 18, Texas. 15 yard penalty. That's an automatic first down. The previous play is under further review. You can't lead with the crown of your helmet. I mean, that's always going to get flagged, and rightfully so. Kind of looked like he ended up hitting him with his shoulder or his back, but. Well, Bill Lamagne, after our game in Dallas the other day, got rave reviews all over the country. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it again. But, uh, what do you think, Bill? He comes in, crown of the helmet is forcible contact there. This call is going to stand. I think there's a point you made there. It does glance off to the side, yeah. but the contact point there is crown of the helmet. You know, and I, and I get the rule. I, I guess I just think. You know, there's a minute left in the ball game, and I don't know. What, there's a minute left, so you go ahead and take no, a head shot? No, no. <laughs> no, and I know you're not saying no, that. No, but I don't. It did. I've seen worse. Yes. I've seen worse targeting fouls than that. And I, I guess agree with you I'm on saying. that, time. I agree. Yeah. I think Bill is dealing with his newfound celebrity very well. <laughs> Clock stop with a minute two to go. Here's the verdict. After review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 18 is disqualified. So early end, but not by much to his career. And he's been a part of this terrific defensive performance tonight. Senior from Miami, Devontae Davis. 
Made his 26th career start tonight. You know the veteran players we talked to said they want to be known for leaving yeah. the legacy of winning a New Year's Six game, getting the tenth win, getting Texas back to where Texas has been in the past, and Longhorn fans believe should always be. Fromm takes it down. That's going to be his longest oh, run this season. And here one. comes more flags, and you hate to see this. Yeah, now that's Anthony Cook, the freshman. And Who I think one. just came in for Davis. He's listed as the backup, and we haven't seen him on the field much. And flags fly everywhere as the officials step in. Texas is losing some of their composure here. Bad penalty on Anthony Cook, and I think Gary Johnson might get called for a personal foul, maybe even taking a swing at the end of the play. This is not what you want if you're Tom Herman. No. The slide, he's given up his body. You can't hit a quarterback sliding like that. I mean, you just can't do that. And then after the hit, there was some more pushing. I think some of the Georgia offensive linemen upset about what was going on. And, uh, and there's the penalty by Gary Johnson that's going to get called. I think every official threw his flag <laughs> at the end of that play. And there were many flags you'd ever see all over the field. Well, George is going to get really good field position after the mm -hmm. end result of this. They've got a minute, just under a minute. If they score quickly, they're going to have an opportunity for an onside kick. So for Tom Herman, I mean, they still have some football to play here, and they've lost some composure as well as a couple key players in the last there are minute. Fouls on both teams. Holding number 79 offense. Personal foul targeting number four defense. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 33 defense. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced. Because of the targeting, the previous play is under further review. Well, Bill Lamagne, you think that's targeting? I know you're not supposed to hit him when he's sliding. It's a the, personal the, the foul. The call for the late hit after the slide is a perfect call. Did he hit him in the head neck area? Did he hit him with the crown of the helmet? I don't see that. So I would want replay to take the targeting call off. And then if that's the case, the two penalties offset and well, then the extra penalty would the, be enforced. Actually, the, right? the, the hit, late hit on the quarterback's a dead ball foul. No, so it was a holding on Georgia. That's correct. And it was a, okay. So you'd have the 10 the yard penalty for the holding. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have uh, the offsets that would occur because of the late hit and the unsportsmanlike conduct. But those were both no, they on were Texas. They were both on Texas. Oh, those they were both on yeah. Texas. But my Thank question is if the, if the booth says it wasn't targeting, but it should be a personal foul. The personal foul we'll for the late hit will stand. Mm hmm. Now you have the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Right. Those will both be So enforced. the only thing that will happen out of this is either Cook is out of the game or not. Yes. Okay. And I, I really think they need to take this targeting call off the board. Mm -hmm. Cook plays very little. True freshman from Houston. A little more time for Scott Van Pelt to practice his ad libs tonight. Sports <laughs> Center coming a little more slowly than it looked like it might a few minutes ago. <laughs> Always enjoy watching Sports Center with SVP. We have the Ford post game show coming up as well. It's been such a great night through most of it for Tom Herman. He certainly doesn't want anything to tarnish one of the great wins in many a year for Austin. And the After Texas review, Longhorns, if it, this the holding stands. foul is a live ball foul on number 79. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced for the previous spot. After the play, personal foul targeting number four defense, unsportsmanlike number 33 defense. By rule, those penalties are canceled. However, number four is still disqualified. That's the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul on number 33. Well, let's bring in Bill Lamagna. I don't understand that. 
No, if, if, if both those fouls are against Texas, and they're both dead ball fouls, they need to be enforced. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. And result in an automatic first down. I think they're correcting it now. Yeah, I think they realize, and it's too bad for these guys too, Bill, because I think it's been a terrific night of officiating in the replay booth, and then they got this skirmish to deal with, and they're not sorting it out well the first time around. I agree with you. They, they've had a good game both on the field and the replay booth, yeah. and they're out of sync the right now. Fouls. The targeting foul will be enforced 15 yards, and the young sportsmanlike foul, that is declined. But that still will count as his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. A little automatic first down. Mm. <laughs> I still disagree with that. <laughs> yeah. If all the dead ball fouls are against one team, you continue to enforce those fouls. Oh, boy. Wow. Please don't speak again. Well, I think Kirby is trying to get an explanation. Maybe. Okay, let's play football. Mm -hmm. So through it all, the ball winds up at the 39-yard line. It's first and 10. There's 54 seconds left. As you said a quick touchdown here and an onside kick, and it's all of a sudden a seat squirmer. And they're moving the ball a little more. They've moved it to the 34-yard line now. So Jalen Green is the newest entry. He's number three on the bottom of your screen there on the three on the 30 yard line. He's a true freshman. Well, they're playing a three deep kind of safety net coverage behind the corners. From throws and it is up for grabs and incomplete. Wow. Battle for the ball. Brandon Jones and Jeremiah Holloman. And it hits the turf with 46 seconds to go. Brandon Jones was in really good position to get an interception. He just couldn't get over the big body of Holloman. I mean, he timed it perfect. He just couldn't get over the top of him. He get his hands on the football. I think you almost have to throw something underneath here. Maybe get it to DeAndre Swift and see if he can make some people miss out in space. No timeouts for George, of course, if they can gain past the line to make the clock would stop momentarily to move the chains. Fromm barely stayed on his feet and did well to get rid of it. There is a flag down. Isaac not of the intended receiver. And it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to get a hold on Isaiah Wilson blocking on Charles Amenahu. What a couple of weeks Amenahu has had if this score stands. Texas wins. We talked to him yesterday. He just graduated a couple of weeks ago. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. In three and a half years in sports management, he said it was one of the greatest thrills of my life. He said, you can imagine, you know, getting a college degree. He said, no, knowing that I'll never have to take a test <laughs> or write a paper again. Yeah. The degree was nice, too. He'll head on to the senior bowl. Three man rush, second and 20. Man wide open. Godwin, and he's beyond the line to make to stop the clock. He's to the 22 yard line. 33 seconds. From over the middle, Swift. Will he get the line to make? Yes. Will he get the end zone? No. He got to the five, banged down by Brandon Jones. Anthony Wheeler in there, too. 22 seconds. Texas not lined up. From dumps it off. Touchdown! DeAndre Swift with 14 seconds to go on a five yard touchdown pass. They're just going to slip DeAndre B.C. Look at the, the confusion here. That's a mayhem moment for Texas. And a nice job of Jake Fromm finding DeAndre Swift in the, out of the backfield. 
There's Blankenship to try the extra point. Then there'll be an onside kick attempt. Georgia with a little help from some defensive penalties by Texas. Clinging to hope with 14 seconds to go. Well, you put your your best receivers out here on your hands team. I would expect to see both Colin Johnson and little Jordan Humphrey trying to field this onside kick. Not a high percentage play, but every now and then you see it happen. It, it, it's really the second bounce that is most important. You got to get that second bounce to go up in the air. Rodrigo Blankenship tees it up. I believe Texas called timeout. Just as Blankenship started toward the ball. Second charge timeout, Texas. It's a 30 second timeout. And as we mentioned, as soon as we're done here in New Orleans Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt, we'll take a look at what these two teams will take into the offseason. Urban Meyer on his final game with Ohio State went out a winner today in the Rose Bowl and the worst beat of all the college football bowl. Always an entertaining <laughs> segment, unless you were on the wrong side, I suppose, yeah. of those beats. Sports Center with SVP. Next, right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. For the moment, it doesn't look like George is going to change anything about the setup. Texas has moved a couple of people closer to the near sideline. And it's recovered by the Longhorns, Colin Johnson. And Texas will win the All-State Sugar Bowl. This is the... Favorite play in offensive coordinator calls right mm -hmm. here, victory. An interesting season for Texas. You know, it started with an unbelievable loss at yeah. Maryland, given everything the Maryland program endured in the offseason. But they rallied quickly, won six in a row, got into the top ten, including that pulsating win against Oklahoma. It's going to be a ten-win season for the first time since 2009. In a New Year's Six Bowl victory. Texas never trailed. Knocks off number five, Georgia. 28-21. Holding the Bulldogs to 72 yards rushing. Here's Holly with Coach Herman. Coach, it wasn't just that you won this game, but it was how you won this game with a physical brand of football. What did you see out there as you guys dominated that Georgia team? Well, we pride ourselves in our physicality. That's... You know, at this point in our program, that's how we're going to win games. That's always how we're going to win games. Uh, and I'm just so proud of how hard our guys played. Uh, they played hard early. They played hard late. They overcame some adversity. Uh, and just, uh, it was a complete team effort. It was also an aggressive effort. You went for it on fourth and goal. You had aggressive calls. What was your mindset trying to get this win? Well, our number one goal coming to New Orleans uh, to participate in the Sugar Bowl was to win the game. And uh, we, we weren't just happy being here. We were, we were going to win the game. We were going to do everything it took to win it. For 26 seniors who've had to buy into you to go out with 10 wins, how does that lay a foundation for your tenure at Texas? Well, I, I, again, I will, I will tell you, they are going to go down um, as the most influential senior class, uh, certainly in our tenure here. Uh, because of uh, the, the culture that they have instilled, the culture uh, that they have upheld as well. And uh, that locker room, 
uh, has finally become a player-led team instead of a coach-fed team. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Four years as a head coach, two at Houston, two at Texas, and hasn't lost a bowl game yet. There's Holly with Sam Ellinger. What a night for him. 169 through the air and 64 and three touchdowns on the ground. Well, three rushing touchdowns for Sam Ellinger. You broke Vince Young's rushing touchdown record that was set back in 2004. What does that mean to you that you did it on the ground in a physical way? It's incredible. Um, you know, up, up front, we did an excellent job all night in the running game. I think we had close to 200 yards rushing, and that's against a really, really, really good defense. And I'm just so proud of the guys up front and the way our defense played. For you guys, you've still got so many young players that can come back next year. How does this build a foundation for you moving forward? Oh, it's huge. I think last year that winning the Texas Bowl gave us a little momentum heading into the offseason, um, knowing that we could, we could beat teams um, when we play our best, and we just beat an elite team. So I'm really excited for next year. You know us in the media. We like to blow stuff out of proportion, but the number, two, the second ranked uh, or second place Big 12 team beat the second place SEC team. What does that mean to you? I, I don't know. I think that uh, we came out and played well today. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make any statements. Obviously, the SEC is an incredible conference, and uh, um, I'm just very excited. Congratulations on a win. Thank you very much. Thank you. You would think he'll be a little sore. Yeah. He took some shots tonight. But Made big plays all night long when his team needed them. The trophy presentation and the Ford post game still to come here on ESPN right after these messages. The Ford post game is brought to you by the Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar. It is the bar. Welcome everybody to the Ford post game from Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Tom Herman in Texas, an upset winner over the number five Georgia Bulldogs. We finish at 11 and three, Texas 10 and four, 28-21 is the final. Sean McDonough with Todd Blackledge. They came out ready to play from the yeah. beginning, race to a 17 nothing lead. I give Bevo the credit, oh, the mascot. Man. An hour before the game, he went after Rugga. <laughs> Little mismatch there, 1,700 yeah. pounds against 62. But uh, it was clear Texas came with a point to make, and they made it yeah. loudly. You know, and we always wonder that with bowl games. Is one team going to be more locked in, more focused than the other team? I think when the game started, clearly Texas was. I think Georgia got a wake-up call. I think they tried to get back in it, but Texas never relented. They won total yards. They won rushing. They won the turnovers. Uh, they were the more physical team, uh, and they, they deserved the win. I mean, it, this win meant a lot to them. You could tell by their preparation, by their execution, and, uh, and you could tell by the way they celebrate. Smart and classy kid, Sam Ellinger. We've met with him a couple of times now. I like the touch with which he arrived. Same high school as Drew Brees in Austin, Texas. Westlake, he came wearing Drew Brees' high school uniform. And even if you're not a Texas fan, if you're a neutral fan watching yeah. this game tonight, you have to like the way this guy plays. He plays with so much heart, so much passion. As we heard when we covered him a couple times this year, he, the kid believes he was born for this, to be the quarterback at Texas. And part of that, I think, in his mind is to be a tough guy, to, to not just throw the football to big receivers, but to be willing to give up your body and run the football, carried it over 20 times today, not for a lot of yards, but hard-fought, you know, message-sending kind of yards every time he runs the football. And so often your life off the field helps Mold yeah. you as a football player. Here's a young man who lost his dad, who was a Texas man in 2003, running a triathlon yeah. in San Francisco. So, you know, the little challenges that come up during the football game sometimes don't seem quite as tough when you've handled things that are really tough and meaningful. Yeah. And uh, raised well by both of his parents. Great performance, but really, to me, more than anything, it was the night for the defense. Georgia yes. had 72 yards. Rushing their previous low was 113 also in a loss at LSU and they had 322 total yards also 
the season low. Yeah, they controlled the line of scrimmage from start to finish. That was clear. Back with more from New Orleans right after this. The Ford Post Game is brought to you by the Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. The Ford post game continues from New Orleans. Time to send you down to the field. Here's Holly Rowe. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to the 2019 All-State Sugar Bowl Trophy presentation. First and foremost, we'd like to thank all of the fans from both Georgia and Texas for coming to this great bowl game and enjoying the hospitality of New Orleans. And now, with a few words, the president of the All-State Sugar Bowl, Rod West. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have witnessed a historic performance tonight. On behalf of the All-State Sugar Bowl Committee, I am proud to recognize the University of Texas Longhorns and their coach, Tom Herman, as the champions of the 85th All-State Sugar Bowl Classic. Congratulations to the University, the great state of Texas. Coach, outstanding performance. And now with the trophy presentation, the Chief Marketing Officer of Allstate, Elizabeth Brady. Congratulations to the University Champions. Today, outstanding victory, Texas. A season of passion, hard work, and commitment really paid off. So from the 75,000 Allstaters, and college football fans across the nation, we congratulate you on this outstanding achievement. Thank you. So Coach Herman, the trophy is apparently too heavy to hand to you. For you in your second season with Texas to set this benchmark in such a prestigious bowl game with a win over Georgia? Uh, well, our, our hats off to the University of Georgia, Kirby. Uh, I've got a ton of respect for him and his program and, and what they've done the last few years. Uh, but as far as our program, I, I, just, I think it means we're heading in the right direction. Uh, our trajectory is very bright, and um, we've got a bunch of seniors here that two years ago bought in uh, to our way of doing things. And um, I can't thank them enough. And uh, they will be remembered uh, throughout the University of Texas history forever. There are 26 seniors on this team. And I, I think you showed great belief in them where down in the goal line, you've been stopped three times. And on fourth and goal, you went for it. What was going through your mind in that decision? And how did it show the trust in your team? Well, uh, you know, we knew we were going to have to be the more physical team to win. And uh, we weren't for a couple plays there, but we had been throughout the game. And our number one goal when we got to New Orleans was to win the game. And uh, we were going to do whatever it took to win that game. And uh, I felt like our defense was playing great. Uh, so had we not gotten it and given them the ball on the minus half yard line, uh, we were okay with that. But uh, had a lot of confidence in our offense that we were going to score there. Thank you so much. And now to present our most outstanding player, Chuck LaPere, the chairman of the executive committee for the All-State Sugar Bowl. The most outstanding player is sophomore quarterback, Sam Ellinger. So the people on TV know this, but the people in the stands do not know that Sam Ellinger, with his six rushing touchdown tonight of the season broke Vince Young's rushing touchdown record some pretty good company Sam when coach put the ball in your hands time in and time again in the red zone 
How were you able to take advantage of that with toughness and grit? Well, we preach it all the off season. Uh, toughness, finish, fourth and inches every day. And we had that opportunity down on the goal line. We did a great job up front of pushing them back and got, was able to get in the end zone. You know, one of the storylines coming into this game was how big this Georgia team was and how your offensive line might not be able to handle them. How do you describe what your offensive line did tonight? Man, yeah, I don't, we had almost 200 yards rushing. So um, if you're going to discredit them, you're crazy. Well, we are not crazy, but I would like to give a shout out to your defense that played terrific, really limiting this offensive powerhouse of Georgia. How would you describe what you saw from your defense? They played incredible. Um, hats off to Georgia. They're an incredible team, but our defense stepped up today, um, running the ball, or defending the run and defending the pass. So they did an, in, um, an incredible job. For all these fans who are in the stands and those who are watching on TV, what does this do to set up Texas for a, a springboard into next season? Longhorn Nation, we're back! We cannot say it any better than that. Congratulations to the Longhorns, the All-State Sugar Bowl champions of 2019. Thanks, everybody, for coming out, and congratulations. We're running out of college football season, but the biggest one still remains next Monday. Don't miss the college football playoff national championship presented by AT&T. Clemson and Alabama at 8 o'clock on ESPN. It's been my great pleasure to work with our wonderful crew all season long, led by our producer, Phil Dean, our director, Scott Johnson. Best wishes to our ops producer, Jim Birch. We're all thinking of you, Jim. Happy New Year on behalf of Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe. Now Sports Center, Scott Van Pelt.